Hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on, man? How's it going? We're just going oh, through the intro. Hello. Am I loud? Hey. Yeah, it was Greetings, loud. human asset. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. I also. Uh, All right. How are you guys? Is Good, man. Okay. Are you Good. fine? How about you, man? Great. Uh, a little bit tired, but, you know, uh, fine. It's a weekend. Nothing to do. So I, I guess I'm fine. I guess I'm fine. Yeah, same here. I, I woke up fucking a yeah. little bit tired, so I'm having my third cup of coffee. Yeah. So, so uh, what's the time uh, at your place right now? It's 1 p.m. Oh, great. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're all right. As long as you're, you know, we'll go as long as you feel comfortable, and then we'll just, you know. Okay. <laughs> we just have a conversation. I'm not going to sit here, and we're not going to – I don't have, like uh, – know a list of questions or what's coming out next or what can we expect when can we expect yeah, point five and that shit no. yeah yeah no. nobody wants to know that you, 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 already, you already tell everybody that on fucking twitter anyways so it doesn't matter you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh so i don't know I, I i can't remember how i found out about scum but when i did find out about it i was extremely extremely interested in the game and I followed it until it released, and then when it released, I obviously downloaded it, and then I, I went to Twitch, and I started watching streamers play it because I was at work, and I'm like, I don't want to suck at this game when I go home and install it, so I watched Twitch all day at work to learn how to play it, but uh, <laughs> I've been, I've been a, you know, a big fan, a gamer pretty much my whole life. I think you and I are pretty much the same age, so you know we've mm, seen a lot of... Best you know, age. Right, right. So, I don't know... I, I think I started, you know, I had the Atari of played Pong, all that kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> but I think my first, my first uh, gaming system was in television. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what was yours? Like, what, what did you start out on it? Yeah, I, I, start, I started with uh, ZX Spectrum Sinclair 48K. Uh, I'm sure if you remember that. It, it came out in 1982, and I yeah. got it in 19, 1983. Because my, my dad uh, liked to play chess a lot, and we, we saw it one day when he was going to uh, visit his family. I, I believe it was his ne nephew or something like that, and he had uh, more more sense to technology and uh, you know advanced stuff uh, like you know color TVs and um, video right. recorders yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, <laughs> video, video recorders uh, with wires on the remotes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. So, so yeah. back then, having a video recorder was uh, fantastic. I believe that each New Year we had Star Wars, uh, uh, you know, the original Episode One, which is Episode Four, if I'm not mistaken, right now. You know, the the first one that right, came right, out right, in the seventies. Right. right. And we watched watched it like each New Year, and it was special. We had like this tape. Uh, obviously not not original one because uh, you you couldn't buy uh, you know original tapes of any kind of movies in, in in Yugoslavia, Croatia, whatever. So we managed to buy it somehow from I don't know. We call them pirates, so because they yeah, yeah. sort of sold you know pirated stuff. So so basically we watched that, and my dad uh, uh, he didn't have much sense uh, in this kind of thing, but he uh, adored playing chess. So. When he he saw that you know his nephew has like this small rubbery kind of uh, thing uh, uh, and uh, actually has a chess uh, on TV screen, uh, he decided he has to buy it. And of course the uh, the reason you know for my mom was that he's buying it for me. But uh, I I I barely saw that computer for <laughs> maybe maybe yeah maybe maybe two hours per week and. It was it was usually on a Saturday in the morning, and uh, I, I I had to beg you know to play something, and it was usually for maybe one or two hours. So yeah. that, that's actually my beginning, and, and the next one was Amiga, Commodore Amiga. Uh, back then, uh, at that point, we had like uh, people who loved loved uh, Atari, and people who loved Amiga. So so uh, Amiga was always better. Uh, yeah. Like for every for everything except sound, 
So, you know, uh, I, I will open my beer. So, uh, excuse me, guys. Uh, no, go ahead. Really go ahead. Thirsty. I'm having Cheers. a coffee. I'm trying to get my, uh, there we go. I finally got, it. I was trying to get over to my other streaming PC. Because, uh, it was like uh, the, uh, it kept the, the camera on scum kept spinning out. But yeah, no, I remember, uh -huh. I remember, I think my first gaming system was in television. And I mean, I played Atari and all that. And I remember my dad went out and bought it. And then eventually I, I tried, I browbeat, browbeat him to buy a, a, a computer and it was a Tandy TRS-80. And I remember him spending all this yeah. money to buy that thing with like a video cassette. And uh, yeah. <laughs> he got it home and we hooked it up to the TV and he's like, okay, what's it fucking do? And so I like put a couple dots on the screen. <laughs> he's like, I just spent $2,500 to put dots on my fucking TV. <laughs> oh, he was so pissed uh, off. I remember him going back to Radio Shack and being like, Hey, can I return this oh. thing? Because all these kids are doing is putting dots on my TV. But yeah, I yeah. mean, I think you know, and, and through the years, I, I I played games. You know, some you know some years more than others. But I think my whole you know my uh, my whole life has been that way. I mean, and, and I'm seeing like, so what you know, like what kind of inspire what what inspired you to? Uh, well, I guess well, let's go a little bit a little bit of background. So you're the creative director. At Gamepires, right, and the co-founder of Scum. Yeah. Am I right with that? And... Uh, co yeah, basically co-founder of Gamepires, and okay. and the creative director, and one of the one of the many people that worked on Scum. So right. yeah. So, <clears throat> so yeah, you've made Gamepires as your 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 business based off of you know, you've developed uh, that. Yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it's it's a company. Uh, currently, we have thirty. Four or thirty-five people. Uh, we, we're constantly hiring, but it's really hard to find uh, people, good people in Croatia. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. No, <laughs> that's fine, man. So, so, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. burp and fuck uh, and fart the whole time too. So yeah, please do. So so uh, we started ten years ago. Uh, six of us. Uh, uh, two of them left in the meantime. Uh, and two, two, uh, two of them arrived uh, in the meantime also. So uh, the, basically we have like this core team, which are these six of us, which are the, the oldest one. And then we have like uh, employees, which uh, some are the seniors and some, some are juniors. Uh, but they're all, you know, really, really, you know, like really, really good uh, simply because uh, uh, we didn't have a lot of resources, so we have to compensate with a lot of working time. So basically, although, you know, they're like for industry standards, juniors with just a couple of years uh, uh, in, in development, game development, they, they still have more knowledge than probably many other uh, senior uh, senior uh, staff from other companies. So so basically, we started ten years ago. Uh, th this was my actually second company. Uh, my first company uh, was uh, Crow Team. Uh, I was one of the you know founding fathers there. Uh, actually, I was I was probably one of the two or three people that started whole gaming industry in Croatia. Really, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, in, yeah, in early nineties, uh, uh, it was it was. Uh, you know, to completely different than than, especially it's it's still quite quite undeveloped, uh, uh, almost thirty years from from that 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 moment when we started. Uh -huh. But it's it's you know it's it's completely different uh, um, area of the world. It's completely different mentality. Uh, it's completely different how uh, making games feels. When you when you say to somebody that you're actually you know living from making games, then most of the people just think that you're playing uh, you know on PS4 or something. Right, and, uh, right. Especially now, if if we start let's say uh, talk about uh, like streamers, content creators, and everything, people here will not understand. But what they they they, they first they think that it's really easy. Uh, second thing, uh, you know uh, the the, the most usual response is, uh, why, why don't you get a job? You know, <laughs> I heard that a lot. Of, I heard that a lot of time. They don't realize that most of these people have jobs and do this because of the passion, because they like to do this kind of thing. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, they don't realize have, that you're a guy who runs your own company and like, like that mm -hmm. alone right there is a feat in itself. You know, management. Yeah, no. Uh, you know, it just everything is. It's it. You know, everyone. You know, everyone thinks everything's so easy. You know, you got the armchair, yeah, it's, it's armchair always, developers. 
Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, 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 look, I was going to say, going back to, uh, you said you've been started early nights. I did a little research on you. So, uh, did you make oh. a game of 5A side soccer? And Yeah, that, that was a uh, third game. That was the third <laughs> the first so, one. So, yeah. let's see. I think it was maybe Football Glory was the first one. Ooh. Second one. Second one? <laughs> All right. So, then. Yeah. The, the, the first one wasn't released. Well, oh, it wasn't released. One. Okay. So, the no. two two release games were Football Glory and 5A soccer. And then. Uh, yeah. You guys, did, when did you start with Serious Sam's? Well, because, I mean, hell, when you developed these games, you were just, what? Right out of high school uh, and college, right? Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I started in, in late high school. Uh -huh. uh, then, then it went through the college. Uh, then eventually, I I had to go to the army, uh, which was, you know, that was, I I don't have anything <laughs> against all you guys who, who like to, you know, have have weapons. I like weapons also, but being in army uh, was simply a waste of time. <laughs> you know, yeah. So it, it 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 was interesting in a way that you. You know, uh, uh, in a way that you actually uh, uh, sort of, uh, well, you get discipline, you get uh, brought to the level that uh, nothing much matters in your life except that you're warm and that, that you have something to eat. Right, so, right. Yeah, so it, it's it's kind of... Uh, from the from the uh, you know mind perspective, it's liberating because you know you don't you don't have to think about anything. Army thinks about everything, uh, uh, and personally, I would definitely advise uh, anybody to who has like opportunity to go for at least a couple of months because you know it's it's really good experience if you if especially if if uh, you know guys uh, if who are listening are not in uh, countries that have like regular army or something like that. I, we ha I had to serve, so it was uh, mandatory for me. Right, right. But yeah. you know, be, being there for 12, 12 months, you know, guarding some warehouse in the middle of nowhere, uh, <laughs> uh, being fucking cold, being yelled at, being a fucking number all the time. Yeah. I don't miss that at all, really. Right. <laughs> you've got. And more, I was like, you've got more value than that. Yeah, I, I was world. like uh, uh, before. Before uh, I got, uh, uh, I, I went to physical exam. You know, for for you know military, I was 50, 55 kilos. I, I'm not sure how many many pounds is that, but you, you have issues with it. You, you should go with metric system, so everybody will be much you know easier to understand. But I believe it's like what it's That's like right. twice, uh, baby, twice, baby. Uh, nice uh, maybe Wait, maybe one hundred twenty pounds, thirty. 30 pounds, is it like something like that? Yeah, if you're 55 kilos, you're 121 pounds, so. Oh, okay, then it's, yeah. then it's double, then it's double, okay. Yeah. I know that it's something with, you know, with, with, with two. So, so, so uh, uh, it, it was uh, too, too low, you know, so they didn't accept me the first time, but, you know, uh, uh, for me, in my head was, you know, it was if, you, if I don't get uh, enlisted, then I'm not worthy or something like that. I was pretty much stupid like that. So <clears throat> I finally managed to, uh, let's say, uh, get a couple of more pounds, and and they they you know they enlisted me, and I was I was really having really high hopes that uh, maybe I will you know learn something in military and everything, but they just put me in the infantry, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, you know like cannon fodder. You know, and and and, and the, the the stupid thing is that actually I, I you know what Malutka is. It's uh, it's uh, it's a rocket that uh, dis destroy tanks. So uh -huh. each rocket has like uh, half of my weight, and I had to carry AK, uh, two rockets, and you know your sh uh, something like uh, the additional let's say uh, forty pounds of gear each day. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> I don't know, it didn't yeah. make any sense. I so, remember. So well, I don't know, you remember yeah. when the first Gulf War went down. You know, my father was of the Vietnam era and missed the draft. You know, his his birthday mm -hmm. in the lottery, he mi he missed getting drafted, and there wasn't. And then I was out of high school, and the first Gulf War came around, and I remember my dad calling me and be like, "Ha ha, you're gonna get drafted," <laughs> and, and I'm like, "I'm like, fuck," you know. And then luck luckily, they uh that that thing ended pretty quickly because uh I was all shit and bricks fairly uh when that started. I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I just turned 18 and the war started." And, you know, and, and, yeah, you, and you learned your whole life, you know, growing up with the Cold War and growing up with, uh, you know, Vietnam and everything that there hadn't really been any kind of, you know, 
any major issues other than like Grenada or the Falkland Islands or anything like that. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden that started and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I remember I was yeah. sweating bullets. I'm like, please, I don't want to go in the military. Because I, yeah, I, my... I just went to co- I just started college and uh, to be an engineer. And I was like, oh, boy, this could put a serious damper and everything. Yeah, my, uh, we, had, we had the war uh, in 90s, early 90s here in Croatia. And it was really terrible. And uh, it's still not, not, not near close to uh, what, at least what I heard from my grandfather, who was also in the Second World War. Right. So, uh, you know, but there was some, at least uh, in the area where I was uh, at, at, at the time. But, uh, you know, I, I wanted to go and serve. Uh, I wanted to join to defend the country. And uh, basically my father said no. So uh, I, I was uh, underage back then. Right. Uh, but, yeah, but that, that from, from, you know, perspective where I am today, after seeing everything that, you know, came from that war and everything that happened in the last almost, well, 30 years, 25 years uh, when, the, when the war uh, was finished, uh, you know, uh, that's actually the smartest, smartest thing that my father did in his whole life. He actually, you know, I, I probably maybe, maybe wouldn't be even here talking. So, uh, you know, it's for, for me and, and, and we sort of, uh, we have float away from the, you know, uh, talking about games and everything. But for me is, uh, uh there is no really honor in war. Not, right. Not, not, not much. You, you can, you have, have respect t- towards your comrades, you know, towards, right. uh, your, you know, people that you serve with and there is really huge connection uh, that you get in the army and everything but after after you see the politicians and everything that uh, you know that goes behind it and ba- basically what they, they actually need you you know the politics and the religion they need you actually uh, when you're born and you know when you want, have to go to the army but in between they, they, they simply don't care so you know for me it's at least a couple of things uh, got Got clear for me regarding that. Yeah, you're so just, let, 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 you're, you're just a you, political pawn, <laughs> you know. That's how I look at it. It's mm-hmm. like you're, you're having guys that probably never would ever serve in the army just yeah. send you to do stuff. Uh, I, I know uh, during during uh, development scam, I I'm, uh, uh, I get acquainted. I met a couple of uh, really good uh, soldiers, ranging from you know Rangers, uh, United States Marine Corps. And right. others, which are absolutely great, and they, uh, uh, you know, and and all of them are really, really normal guys. Uh, I was amazed uh, that they actually, you know, are not that much fucked up in, in the head, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> yeah, but and and they shared a lot of knowledge, uh, like for example, how 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 it feels to get shot with SVD. And, and you know, be alive after that, which is something that, <laughs> which is something that average game developer probably doesn't know. Right, exactly. <clears throat> You're like, well, I remember yeah. shooting the SVD in Call of Duty, and I could smoke dudes. So yeah, two so, miles. So, out. yeah. So, so I, I believe that uh, at one point, a moment, I was talking uh, with my friend from United States Marines, and uh, I asked him, you know. Uh, uh, we are thinking to add add is like Call of Duty. Uh, uh, a notifier, uh, you know, damage notifier, so that you actually know uh, where somebody, direction where somebody is shooting at you, you know, this arcade shit, uh, like a circle uh, in, in that usually you find in Call of Duty and I know this arcade game. So, so uh, I, I was, I was considering this, this kind of thing, and I asked him, uh, can you really tell, uh, uh, you know, from where the bullet came uh, that hit you, you know? Not, not, not tell if if somebody's shooting at you because yeah, which, they told which direction? actually, yeah, direction. So uh, he, he he answered no. So that they had many uh, casualties that were, swore that the bill, bullet came from some direction, but basically they were like shot from completely opposite side. Right. So uh, yeah, but but they they also told me that there is like uh, uh, a distinct sound that you hear when somebody is shooting t- directly towards you and. Uh, we actually replicated that really well in, in Scum. So because uh, you know the, it's how how the sound uh, uh, you know from the barrel uh, spreads, and basically if it's somebody shooting uh, directly towards you, you will hear these specific pops, which you you will not hear if it's if the gun is uh, aimed in some other direction. 
So all these kind of things were really interesting to 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 you know to hear to implement in the game, and uh, uh, for me it was great thing because uh, if we didn't make think uh, like scum that uh, obviously still in development but if we make this kind of uh, game interesting people would not approach us we, we couldn't you know find out these kind of things by ourselves no way and and uh, it was great for 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 you know for for me personally to to have like really uh, uh, honorable veterans approaching me you know like a kid like i'm important guy you know <laughs> and telling me, me these kind of things you know i, I was yeah. I was okay, okay, sure, you know, but I'm just a developer, you know, you know, I you don't you don't have to show me any respect. I didn't, you know, go in the front line. I, I didn't get shot in my left, you know. So uh, it was it was it, it was great how how down to earth these guys were, really. I, re I really that's and that's one of the things as far like what we were talking about here is the details and that's what I always tell people about this game is like anybody can make a game, but the devil's in the details and the little shit like. Always. Just how Always. you're walking on gravel, then you transfer the grass, and you hear your grass sound changes, and then now you're on the now you're on the pavement, and your your shoe sound changes, and you know just yeah. little things, and you know it, you know how they always say you always hear the shots when you're getting when when they're missing you, but you never hear the one that hits you, and it's seriously yeah. literally like just it, it's it's to a T the little details in this game that you guys you can tell that you're passionate about because anybody else would just go and just you know float it out and be like whatever you know it's a uh, here. You're getting shot at. Here's your your canned uh, sounds or whatever, and 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 pass by. You know, walking in the snow and just just the small things that, you know, like when you're shoveling and digging it for your box, you actually see dirt go on the shovel. I mean, it's just one of those things that you know you really don't even have to yeah. pay attention to, but you guys do, and that you know that shows that your passion for the game rather than just mailing it in. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and 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 we still you know have like so many things that we would like to add at this kind of level, really detailed stuff. And but there are always something you know major that we have to push, push you know with the higher priority. Uh, uh, our sound guy, uh, if he's listening, Grale, hello, uh, is actually has done awesome job. So uh, yeah. I, I, the only thing that I'm sorry is that he doesn't have so much programmer support, uh, programming support that he actually does much more. Uh, you know so. Uh, the, the, this kind of thing, especially with sound, uh, uh, it's it's basically sound is uh, fifty percent of all experience in the game. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, many developers in, especially in Croatia, do not understand this kind of thing. And uh, uh, when you're a game developer, uh, the the it's always like uh, uh, when you pick pick people, it's always like you have programmers and and usually three D artists or two two D artists depending on. Uh, a type of the project that you're doing and uh, uh, uh nobody has you know uh, money or time to devote to a special you know to hire a special sound guy so uh, when we actually hired a sound guy uh for the first time and it was uh, uh probably i believe one year or something like that before scam was uh, uh, uh released in early access then you actually know that you you have like grown as a team and have capabilities to actually have somebody uh, taking care of your sound before before that we were uh, uh, mo I, well it was mostly my job to to uh, find sounds to sample them to put them in the game and uh, I'm not the right person for that I'm pretty much limited and deaf uh, if, if it comes to music and 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 sound quality I can provide something but it's always good to have professional in that area right right no and and you know and the, and the i over the two years of playing the game uh you can you, it's you can, it's just amazing how things have developed now i mean you get so back to i was wanted to go back to your your early you know so you're you're a pretty successful guy you run your own company you got this great game you guys are real passionate about it. you've you've grown uh, uh, uh. You've, You've grown with the demand for your game. You know what I mean. Your, your game is. Yeah, I, 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 I would say I would say that I'm a pretty lucky guy. I wouldn't go successful, you know, uh, uh, because well, luck and success uh, you know, go hand in hand. I believe. Always, <laughs> you know? yeah. it's always like uh, yeah. the one thing that I learned. Actually, two things. If somebody achieves something, and uh, you know, if you go to listen some lectures or something like that, 
I don't know, famous, whatever, game developers or, you know, any any other kind of uh, uh, maybe IT experts or whatever, they will always tell you that they achieved something because they're like smart, because they did the right thing, because they have huge knowledge. And if they fail, then they will say it was bad luck. Right, so, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So, so basically, it's it's both in both cases. Uh, uh, you you simply need to have some knowledge and you have to have some luck. I would rather go with more luck and less knowledge if possible. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, my, but yeah. Yeah. My dad used to say it. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Mm. But I mean, so you've not you haven't been. So you went to college. I don't. What would you go to college for? Uh. Well, I was sort study? of. Uh, it, it was it was uh, basically informatics, informatic, uh, informatics and electronics uh, okay. in, in Croatia. It, it, we we have we don't have so much colleges uh, here. Uh, there are a couple of major ones, and this one's this was the major. Uh, the the reason why I uh, went there is uh, I wanted to learn how to program. Uh, uh -huh. I, I yeah I, I was a programmer uh, in in high school. Uh, back then it was uh, Pascal. Uh, uh, the language uh, and C, not C sharp, C plus plus, but just C. Uh -huh. uh, so I I knew that, but uh, I want to learn C plus uh, plus, uh, which is something that is we are still using in uh, right now. And all all really, you know, like high, let's say successful uh, game development teams have really good C plus plus programmers. Uh, there is no way that you can make uh, you know high tech game with C sharp or Unity, for example, unless you can you change the whole <laughs> engine like like the guys from Tarkov did. So uh, so so yeah, basically uh, I want to learn programming, but in the first two years of my college, I uh, actually all this I had all this kind of uh, you know things that. Like math, which is obviously important, but right. uh, and 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 I don't know uh, electronics, which I didn't love, you know, at all. So uh, after first two years, I simply decided that I, I just want to finish the college in case uh, you know what I'm doing as a hobby, what I was doing as a hobby back then, and that was like games uh, wouldn't be you know able to provide me a steady job. So. Uh, just like a backup. So my my college wasn't, uh, unfortunately, you know, at the end, uh, didn't teach, uh, didn't uh, teach me anything. Uh, it did taught me, uh, taught me, uh, you know, way of thinking and sort of uh, uh, forced me to finish kind of things that I started to work, which is the most important stuff uh, that I learned. Uh, uh, and and the, the the thing that a lot of Small indie developers fail and start, and this and, and this doesn't uh, apply only for game development, but does apply for everything that uh, people are doing. And that's if you start something, try to finish it. Right. You no, know, do not do not start one thing, then jump to the other thing, then jump to the third thing, and at the end you have like a couple of uh, uh, unfinished projects, and basically you didn't learn anything. So. Especially for the game development, it's the first thing is that you can pick anything. You can pick, and it's actually I, I would advise people to pick really simple games, but try to make it uh, you know finished from from beginning till the end. And if it's possible, try to release it. Just that you have uh, initial idea about about uh, how your game sucks and how it not sell. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, that. So that you actually get, you know, like a punch in the in the gut from the reality that basically no matter what you do, if you, even if you make the best game in the world, you still need a lot of luck or somebody to push you. So so you know uh, it's it's kind of thing that developers, especially in this, do not think about, and we we always and I I was like. Uh, even with our pre previous project, I was thinking, you know, if I make a really good game, if it's really enjoyable, uh, great gameplay, everything, it will be good. Yeah, it was a great game, but nobody heard about it. So, you know, and, you and have issues there. Now, speaking of which, so, so yeah, so you were, you, just, you started Crow Team when you were in college, is it, am I correct with that? Uh, no, basically we or started you... in the late, yeah, in the late high school, we, uh, 
I, I was doing I was doing this. Uh, I'm not sure if you're uh, you were aware of uh, this kind of underground scene that happened. Uh, uh, you know, uh, back back then in Croatia, we couldn't buy games. Uh, uh, there wasn't like there there wasn't any stores, uh, or or there was no internet. Also, right, yeah, so yeah. you couldn't download anything. So, uh, internet was uh, the really only f- way. Extremely rich people. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and uh, yeah, definitely for the rich people. And I had it uh, later on the college, and I was playing. Uh, I was using these terminals in the hall, in the entrance hall, to play mud, mud games. Uh, you know what mud games are. Yeah, but yeah, yeah you know. so, I. So, I, I... I remember back in the day, you know, you, if you had like a 9800 baud modem, you know, that was like, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, wow. that, that, that was like, wow. You're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you get screaming. all the girls. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. yeah, I don't think the chicks were lining up at my door for the 9800 baud modem. I remember one guy had yeah. one. I can tell you right then and there he wasn't a ladies' man, but still. No, I, I yeah, yeah, it was. things were much different back in the day as far as games. And, unless you know, for for me, it was all consoles and stuff like that. And. There was PC games mm-hmm. and stuff like that that I, I dabbled with, but I wasn't so much in the programming or anything. I was more on the mechanical side and electrical side. Yeah. But mm-hmm. so speaking of your other games, you had so you went from you had you Crow Team back. You started Crow Team back in 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 high school, and then well, yeah, it was it was uh, early nineties right. when we started started you know like uh, get got got together and and uh, well well uh, I was. Uh, when I started playing in, in elementary school, I played a lot of games. I loved playing games. So in high school, I started to think, uh, you know, about the ways how to make my own game. Uh, but I was uh, more in graphics, uh, more in uh, back, back then in 2D art because all these games were in 2D. Uh, yeah. They were like pixel art, which are still popular. Right. Uh, so I was I was drawing things. I was on this Amiga demo, demo scene when I, where we created these uh, demos or intros that were usually shown on uh, before loading the game. If you ever got this kind of uh, you know game on discs, which are three and a half inch discs, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, like thirty Amiga, floppy yeah. discs. Yeah, so so uh, yeah, thirty-five. So so basically, uh, we we first uh, created these kind of demos. Uh, these demos were actually technology uh, te- for techno- uh, technological side, really you know, uh, really piece of art and piece of technology because uh, uh, intros, for example, had to be put on the on the boot part of the disc, which was really really uh, you know like small. You didn't have a lot of space, and it was loaded like instantly. So uh, you had to maneuver with really, you know, low amount of uh, uh, things that you can put there. So you have, had to be really, really smart, uh, and uh, that's why uh, all good coders, all, or how we called programmers back then, uh, start with coding in in um, um, machine language, you know, uh, uh, with really low level language. Uh, because you know, uh, it it was sort of uh, I'm not you no know, prog- programmer, so I probably say this in the wrong way. But it was uh, much easier translated and took uh, much less space. So so right. uh, we bas- basically uh, learned our trade. You know, like uh, learned uh, uh, how to do things by doing these demos. And the next step for us was let's make something playable. Uh, so basically, I, I teamed up with a couple of guys. Uh, and interesting thing is that we were all in the same city at the same time, and you know it was like also five of us, and it was pure luck basically. Yeah, and, I was gonna say there, we, goes, uh, there goes the luck right there again. You got you know oh, yeah, the five again, guys it's all again, the same it, passion. Or, you know, maybe it's a faith, maybe it's a luck, but you know, I, I would say it's luck. So we all have this wish to make something, and uh, the first first game that I was making graphics for uh, uh, with with another guy uh, who is still in in the crow team was uh, oh sorry was a uh, Sokoban. A Sokoban was that like push grades game? You have like it was logical game. You have like layout of uh, uh, you know from the top perspective. Then you have to uh, you have like scattered uh, boxes all over the, this like la- labyrinth or something like that. And you have uh, a, a specific amount of moves that you can use to move these boxes on s- certain positions to to finish the level. So it's you know it's a, a 
basically uh, like puzzle game, something like that. So right. uh, we, I, I did the gra- I did the graphics for that. I did the main screen. Uh, uh, this game was sent out to some English publisher, and they said no, but uh, they offered us to make this uh, football uh, kind of game. Uh, which we accepted, and basically that was the start of, uh, you know, me working on on real games that that, that got published and everything. Uh, Serious Sam as 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 a game, and uh, you, you're probably aware that Serious Sam four came out a, a couple of yeah or week ago or something like that. So uh, Serious Sam uh, was uh, came much much later. Uh, we we worked on Serious Sam for five years before it even uh, got near to uh, uh, you know to to what people perceive as as Serious Sam. Uh, initially, it had to be it was it was like uh, 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 more like designed. Uh, basically, we didn't know what to do. Uh, we, right. we were we were playing we were playing around. We thought that to make some sort of uh, MMO game with NPCs and everything. So you mentioned that got reduced. To what Sirius M actually is right now. Uh, so, so basically, that was uh, at that point we were working uh, in in our spare time. I was uh, uh, finishing my college. I had a lot of a lot of spare time. Uh, I didn't, you know, like uh, devote any anything, uh, any 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 spare time to anything else except uh, uh, doing doing uh, uh, stuff for Serious Sam. And in and that, and that period, actually, I switched to uh, uh, completely to 3D animations and, and uh, level design and gameplay. So um, uh, I sort of was doing completely different things that, uh, that, that than the things that I started with. Yeah, because you guys also did, uh, was it, Gas, Guttle, Gas Guzzler's Full uh, Metal Frenzy and uh, Gas Guzzler's yeah. Extreme, too, right? And I so, so guess, and after yeah, after guess, after knowing mm-hmm. that I realized now I know why the driving in scum is so good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not good. It, it's okay. It's not it's, good. It's, it's yeah. better than most games. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it still it's, it still can be improved. So uh, when I when I opened my my you know second company uh, started again from literally from zero after fifteen years, uh, uh, I get around. You know, a couple of uh, over the veterans uh, from the you know knowledge side, knowledge perspective regarding you know the work they they did, they did in gaming industry. But in Croatia, uh, in Croatia, that was still like uh, not nearly on the levels that were already in the world. Uh, and and I, I was on the couple of uh, uh, I was on the couple of uh, you know uh, expos and. Oh, it start, started raining here. So if you hear noises, that's that's rain. So so uh, I was in a couple a couple of uh, you know game developer conferences, and I was listening to guys uh, uh, talking about their uh, uh, history, how they started, everything. There there was one guy who who is well, let's say 15 years younger than me, and he started. Well, I was born in Canada, then I joined Ubisoft, then I went to you know Activision, then you know, and I was like, well. I was born in literally like Africa and we didn't have anything and we, we made games from stones and I was playing with my <laughs> dick all the time. You know? Yeah, you're like, you're like, yeah, it must be nice to have a charmed life where you're working for fucking Activision and Ubisoft and, you know, you can. Yeah, all so, so I believe that he learned a lot and, and, uh, uh, but still it's like, uh, he had much more luck than I. And uh, to to get the knowledge, to get everything, to already start working on some something, and 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 I, along with my buddies, we had like uh, issues to. Uh, let's say I'm 32. I'm opening my company. Uh, I have uh, I I have just quit my my job. Like uh, I was IT in IT, like uh, Java programmer, which was the worst thing. Uh, you know that I. It yeah. was really boring. It was. Uh, I was going to say it that you, the, you, you haven't been always in game programming. You got, you worked at uh, programmers, like yeah, software developers yeah, for other in, companies. Yeah, I worked for IBM, actually. Right. No, so, I'm sorry. It's quite, quite opposite from uh, from game development. And it was it was great job. It was a good paycheck, uh, you know, steady paycheck, everything. You had the opportunity to learn 
But it, it, it was fucking boring. Right. First it's thing, not, it's not the, your passion. Yeah and, the, yeah. and the second thing, the customers, because we were building uh, this kind of uh, programs, widgets, whatever, webs, uh, web shops, uh, uh, user interfaces, whatever, for uh, uh, mostly, you know, government run, run companies. And with, with you know employees uh, from for that work for government, and no matter what you do for them, they were always unhappy, and and they were always like uh, in a bad mood and and cursing you and everything. And it was for me, it was a completely different world because you know before I made games, I made you know let's say uh, whatever game like Serious Sam, and most of the people were pretty much happy. You know, with with, right. the, with the application I made with with the, with the product. So for for me, it was really you know like I'm busting my ass to make this kind of thing work, to be optimized, to work everything, and then I have to listen. Somebody cursed me, uh, use really bad language, you know, which is not yeah. professional. And you're like, thanks, and, asshole, for for shitting all over my hard work. Yeah, yeah, know? really. It, it, yeah. One guy, uh, one, one one woman actually called me an asshole because. Uh, her, her boss didn't give her a raise or something, and uh, I was like uh, holding a seminar for this kind of soft, software that we did for them to to optimize their work process and everything. And she literally called me asshole in front of like 30 people, and I was <laughs> oh, in a suit and, and a suit and tie, sitting or standing there, you know, thinking, you know, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was ca- calm on the outside, but inside was, you know. Fuck right. it, I don't know what to do in this kind of thing anymore. Yeah. In your so, mind, you're like, fuck this job. <laughs> you know, I want to yeah, walk really, out but at the same time. Really. You're like, yeah, I need a paycheck. So if, if I can, you know, I'm still not old enough to make, uh, uh, to give advice to other people. But if I can make advice to anybody, if you have opportunity to do something that you really enjoy and, and to live from that, that you're a lucky person. Because there are like a lot of people working jobs that they don't like. They hate, you know, and, 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 and most of the time, basically, most of the people hate jobs they do because of other people, not because these jobs are, you know, like bad right. jobs, but it's, from other people because who you work we with. lack, yeah, we, yeah, we lack respect. Right. We lack respect. So at one point I said, fuck it. Uh, I, I quit, I quit the, the, the job. Uh, I talked with, uh, my my partner uh, Andre, uh, old CTO currently in the company, uh-huh. and he he was a little bit scared back then, you know, to to leave the uh, secure job and everything. But uh, it's a big I, it's I, a big leap them, of faith. I mean, you got to you know. It's it, always it's always yeah. it's always and and I'm always uh, uh, when 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 we are you know uh, comparing two of us, I'm always more impulsive. I'm mo- always more Im- emotional. I'm uh, I'm always more straightforward. Uh, I'm I'm like uh, you know a guy who wants to move, uh, who wants to do stuff, who, who cannot sit around. And he was always like more like uh, calm down, down to earth guy, and and more uh, more careful and everything. So uh, he actually functioned really well because of that. Yeah, you're kind of. Uh, po- working with a guy who's opposite of you can can level you out in areas that you may not be you know you if you're if you're the if you're like i noticed that if you have if you have different people in a group that have different dynamics or different skills they kind of they mm-hmm. kind of balance each other out and they make good yeah. teams if you have a bunch of guys that are all gung ho you know uh you it's know not, yeah yeah it, then, it, then 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 it, there's so, all there's 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 more uh room for uh for trouble if you have everybody with the same mindset if you have you always have to have someone absolutely to you. absolutely especially if you have like a couple of people who who just want to lead you know uh, uh in a way that they want to be in charge but right they don't right. Want, they, they don't know uh, how how is to be in charge they don't they don't, they don't have a responsibility they don't have, they don't have a vision you know, for the project or anything, they just want to be in charge. That right. is the, that's the you know biggest problem uh, in in team handling that I have encountered many times. Yeah, and that, so, that same with me. It's like if you, if there's people that don't have a vision; they just want to have the status of being the the, the guy, somebody important. Yes, right? Somebody yes, exactly. Yes. And then and then and that that does that doesn't translate into being a good leader and and getting people to follow you and getting people to yeah. do work for you. Yeah. 
You know, never, never, you end up, never, you end up being never. that asshole boss eventually if you're if you if you're like that, you know, and and that's you know. So you moved yeah, out of because... the, you moved out of your out of your out of your IT job, and then you went into what is it? Uh, you were a creative art director at at a, at a company. Yeah, so 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 basically, we managed to find investor. Uh, uh, yeah, that uh, was crazy enough to invest money in us. But you know, it's quite different finding investor in Croatia than finding uh, investor in Silicon Valley. Uh, uh, in Croatia, if somebody invests money, in, if somebody invests money in you, then uh, they want to be CEO. They want to have everything right. under control. Uh, while you know, uh, in states, if somebody invests money in you, then basically you get money and have liberty to do whatever you want. Right. Uh, we had a lot of issues with our current, uh, still, you know, partners uh, and investors, beginning investors, until everything sorted out uh, eventually. But uh, uh, initially, I remember that we had to make a weekly report about progress on the game. Uh, you know, we actually met each week on Thursday and had had meeting for one or two hours to, you know, to tell our investors the progress and you can imagine how how stupid it is because we started the company there are six of us we don't have, have anything except pcs we didn't have like engine we had to build one uh, uh, because we didn't have money to to license unreal which was a couple of millions or million right right per project uh, there was no uh, other uh, engine that we could use or let's say like unity which is popular one uh, uh, so we had to do our own thing uh, so you have to do a rendering engine which displays uh, everything that is rendered like you know a thing in the game and supports animations supports models texturing everything and then you then you have to make uh, um, like something like a level editor where you can make levels and uh, uh, import stuff so not only that you're ma making uh, uh, you know, like rendering engine, uh, you also have to make tools to make games. And for that, six people is not enough, especially if uh, uh, if th uh, three of these, like half of these people are programmers. Right. And then, uh, and then you're going to spend half part of your week on telling somebody what you're doing instead of developing. You know, that yeah, was, that so, was my so, big thing is when you have your meetings, you're like, so what are you doing? Well, I had to sit here and write down everything that I, was doing to tell you and it's keeping me from and, doing what you actually want me to do. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And, 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 and basically in one week I, I cannot produce anything, you know, yeah. really. Yeah. So, so back then I remember that I was doing, uh, because, uh, uh, with, with programming, you know, simply need time, you know, to devote, to make, uh, proper kind of whatever engine or whatever are you doing. But uh, from our side, at least I can make something fleshy enough, you know, to attract their attention. So I was making a lot of, uh, uh, you know, models of cars and renderings uh, simply to show them that actually something is going on. Because back then, at that moment, they could pull pull off the, the whole invest in, investment that they, you know, gave us uh, each week. And since, you know, it was quite risky for us because we left our jobs, we didn't have anything else, uh, you know, on the side. And I had my child, my, my, my kid uh, was born, my right. son was born. Uh, responsibilities. Yeah, so, so uh, I, I told, 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 told guys that at least we have, let's, let's behave like we have one opportunity. So let's do the best that we we can. Let's uh, you know like work until we drop. <laughs> Basically, that's that's what we did. Right. Uh, and that was that was so difficult period that I wouldn't re repeat it. You know, again, really. And and uh, e e e even if even even if I take six people, my best six people right now, and if we. Uh, you know, try to start again the whole thing. I I think that we will we would fail. Uh, yeah. The 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 whole mindset mindset that we had uh, back then and and uh, 
like thinking that there is like like not not that we are trying to make a game, but that we actually uh, are doing this to stay alive, you know, something like that. Yeah. So, so basically, we did that game in two years. Not only the game, but uh, but also the engine and technology, which was uh, I remember going to Gamescom. You heard about Gamescom? Yeah, it's yeah. It's like the it's like the biggest fucking fair, on much bigger than E three. By the way. I have this inside information that that uh, there will be no much more more E3 from the next really? year. Really? Yeah, they 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 supposedly uh, go bankrupt. Really? So well, yeah. well, there you go. You know, there that, that that's yeah. also a business and doesn't look like they were running it too well if they went bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, and yeah. and for th- this year, many shows were canceled. Uh, yeah, due to, due to COVID. Uh, as well. So I believe that a lot of shows will also have issues because all these shows were pretty much expensive and, you know, you've had to schedule everything in advance and, you know, Sponsors. blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, and COVID, uh, COVID did probably play a lot of big part in that bankruptcy too. I'm yeah, uh, COVID was the was the main probably reason right. and the panic uh, behind it. So, so basically we went to Gamescom for the first time. Uh, uh, with your in, engine uh, and with uh, your game? With, with uh, basically with uh, with our game running uh, on our engine, and uh, uh, we didn't have any you know like meetings with, uh, there uh, assigned or anything like that scheduled. Uh, we just had one laptop uh, uh, that we bought. It was Alienware, pretty much expensive one. It was kind of investment. Uh, it 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 cost around I don't know uh, maybe two and a half thousand. Uh, uh, US dollars, uh-huh. something like that. Yeah, it was, or, or or maybe three, maybe no, or more close to three thousand US dollars back then. And uh, it was capable of running the game. And uh, uh, we came uh, in in Cologne uh, day before the 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 expo uh, uh, was starting, and we were in the hotel lobby, and uh, that that was like the first time I. Uh, experience the how big the world of game development is i was back then already 20 years in game development but i never visited any kind of uh, uh, expo fair anything had any kind of contact with uh, you know uh, other developers uh, right. uh, we were so closed uh, uh, in in also in crow team uh, in our company constantly working that we were, uh, you know, thinking to that these expos are a waste of time and and uh, that we better better should be working on the game. But basically, at that point, I realized how uh, uh, how huge is this world. And uh, we were in this lobby, and they were like, uh, it was full of people, full of other developers. Uh, uh, that is the beauty of of going uh, going on Gamescom because. Uh, at that time, like this, that week, particular week, week when uh, game, Gamescom uh, is held, uh, the whole city is full of game developers. It's like nerd city, <laughs> no, totally. <laughs> and and, and you, you, it, it was really great to to be part of some big nerd army, if I can, you know, describe it like like that, because. They were all like they were all in in in, in these like separate separate booths showing uh, trying to uh, sh- uh, to to uh, finalize our pitch documents for you know for presentations and and running the games and everything uh, drinking beer and uh, I remember uh, you know coming inside uh, like 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 uh, I always tell guys that that, that felt like uh, did you did you uh, watch uh, what's that movie from uh, I cannot remember the name. It's it's a, it's from Tarantino, one of the first movies with uh, uh, Reservoir Dogs. Uh, no, 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 no. With Mexican, with with uh, mariachi, mariachi. Uh, so you know, you, you know when when uh, Banderas is entering uh, uh, the pub, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It, it felt like that. <laughs> you know, it felt like that. So uh, we, we we sat to our booth and I opened the game, open open the laptop, started the game. And you just hear, you know, people commenting, wow, what's that? It looks really great. And you're so proud, but you're, right. in, you know, you're acting, you're acting like, 
you don't hear anything. So uh, so we were really really you know excited everything. And the next day we went out to to, to the fair and uh, with with just laptop and a couple of printed documents. And we managed in a couple of hours we managed managed to arrange meetings for the next three days. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, so we are still in in, the, in in contact with most of these people uh, that we we actually met there for the first time, and uh, regretfully nothing has ha- has happened on Gamescom. Although we had like a couple of really good opportunities, we had like this really big investor uh, recognize the game, and he actually told us that uh you know when we well we told him about how people how much people worked on the game that we actually build the technology in the game he was really impressed yeah because that's, that's, that's a that's a that's a lot of work i mean building your own engine and you know and developing everything yeah like, in, in, you know, in basically in, in two years uh, starting from nothing and build right. uh, build a game is uh especially that kind of game well uh, a lot of uh, well, back then we were not like uh, amateurs. We we had experience and everything, right. so we were we, we knew what we were doing. But still, that, that's still was a, lot a pretty of work. hefty feat. You know, it's not like you know you uh, absolutely. Just, you know, yeah. someone so, so, some recognizes your the fruit of your labors. Yeah. So so basically, uh, uh, and one of the investors uh, was with us, and uh, investors were never like completely sure if we we're like doing things or maybe playing games or trying to take their money but basically when <laughs> he listened to that guy that, that guy was really you know financial guy that came from activision and had like a huge fund uh, behind him and everything he, his own own company publishing it so really huge guy uh, 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 he told you know openly that this is the best thing that he saw on the whole gamescom and we were so happy but unfortunately, that guy uh, gave our game to you know uh, his team uh, uh-huh. to assess everything, and there uh, there was a uh, beginning of our problems. So that team requested the amount of people that were you know on the on the on the job, uh, uh, a lot of details, and soon enough we got response that we were simply too risky to invest because uh, like we were six people in the team, uh, the game was fine. Everything was fine, but you know they don't invest in people in teams less than let's say thirty people. Right, right, and I mean six uh, people. You know, I think that's what I. Uh, you know, if you see a lot of these games, these these people come out, they'll have the smaller dev teams. That I think maybe the risk is they're you know, worried is that it's good game and then it gets popular and then are you going to be able to scale with the demand of the game? You know, because you're going to yeah. just like with Scum, you guys started with a small a small group and then. You know, you you guys when you released the game, it was huge, and you sold. I don't know how many how many copies did you sell? Was it a million copies? Uh, million? In three weeks, yeah, in three weeks was one million. One uh, we mil- were the best, yeah, the best selling game at that time, the best selling game yeah. in the first twenty four hours on Steam. Which it was, was it was you know, huge, great. and then, you know now now you got to scale with that demand, and you got to deal with. You got to deal with all kinds of things that you never had to think about before. Yeah, that that was that was actually you know uh, uh, basically the game was crap really back then. It was really uh, we did uh, honestly we did the best we could, but we were pushed pushed in the in the release and uh, you know it's still if 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 we even didn't release it uh, uh, back then uh, how, if we didn't do what we did. Uh, uh, even if we released it like a year later, it still wouldn't be good enough. Uh, uh, simply because we didn't have much, uh, you know, players, player base to test the right. game to, to tell us what's what's right and what's what's wrong. Uh, so uh, when, when I see from from today today's perspective, we didn't have any choice but to release it. Yeah. Uh, luckily, luckily yeah. for us, it went really well. Uh, I, in a way, in a way that we scammed everybody in the game. <laughs> yeah, you know. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Really, no, I'm sorry the, about it. The game, the game, but the core, you... the core of the game is still there. I mean, everything that you, when it released is still the same. The map is beautiful. You know, the character, yes. the, the animations, everything. You know, everything is has been refined. But you know, the core of the game is still there. And you, you know, when I first opened up the game, I was still, I was. You know, I was just the, the the mechanics and the way your character moved and the sounds and everything. Yes, it was good, and it's it's even gotten better. Now, you know, 
you guys, every, everyone's a, an armchair fucking developer and thinks that, you know, doing this yeah. is like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like getting people to give you money is, is, is so fucking easy. You know what I mean? You know, you got to come with a yeah. product. You got to, you're trying to raise money and, you know, you, you're, you're, you're not a, you're not a rookie either. And then you guys get this, you know, wildly popular game that comes out and, and it's not like you guys can hire fucking thousands of people to test your game, to stress it and stuff like that. I'm sure you have no. simulation stresses and stuff like that, but nothing's ever going to fucking be the same as, uh, as, as having actual people doing it, you know? Yeah. So, so, so the, the, the whole thing is, uh, we were, we were, you know, completely aware of the state of the game and, uh, and, uh, uh, all of us were embarrassed, literally embarrassed that we have to, have to release the game in that state. But uh, we also hope because it's early access that people will understand that, right. you know, that's the whole point. But we were, we were still embarrassed because up until that moment in all my career, I didn't release, uh, I didn't release uh, the game that was in that kind of condition. You know, uh, it was uh, all my games were pretty well polished. Right, right. You were you were, you were used for, to a little bit, little bit more polished uh, release. Yeah. So for you know, from the professional perspective, that's uh, not some, something that you know anybody would want to do. Yeah, I mean, and, I, and I can see that. But I mean, you know, like also you're you're dealing with the Unreal Engine. So I mean, how how is it dealing with that? Like, you know, do you get you guys suddenly does does un, does uh, Unreal Engine start noticing you more since you sold a game, you know, three, a million yeah, copies like in three weeks. Yeah, no, Epic, and they're no. like, do they, do they, do they say, oh, well, maybe we'll, if they, because I, I was, I'm always, I was always wondering, like, if you use the Unreal Engine, do you like, and they're coming out with a new version, can you say, hey, we would like this, this, and this added to the, to the base <laughs> engine? No. No. And then they say, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll do some revisions and allow that, or, or is it just, you just got to deal with what they give you? No. No, no, and no. <laughs> okay, wow. so uh, the, uh, so this is how it, how it went for us. So uh, we had a couple of uh, uh, couple of meetings with Epic uh, uh -huh. because we had to uh, discuss about uh, licensing, and there were like a couple of options that you can go with if you sort of pay in advance. Uh -huh. uh, uh, then they they can they can lower the percentage of money, uh, and that was time before Fortnite. Right. Uh, they, they were they were building that game. I cannot. I, I'm really bad with names. Uh, which uh, uh, was built on Unreal Engine, and of course, and and uh, uh, was supposed to be really successful, like AAA title. Uh, but they they eventually stopped it because of Fortnite. I can I cannot remember the name. It was oh, it was well known. I know I know that they had Fortnite had to save the world, which was kind of like a co-op survival game, and then. That was the game you purchased. Is that what you're talking about, or there was a no, 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 something else. So, oh. so basically, we we approached them uh, uh, immediately after we signed with Devolver, and uh -huh. and uh, uh, we uh, want to have a presentation of the game and uh, what we did so far. And and I remember that I was talking with some you know high ranked uh, uh, people, uh, epic people, uh, and basically they're really cool and everything. Uh, and I, I was talking about scum and everything, and and my vision and what will be, and it's it, in all marketing and uh, you know what I was uh, each time I was talking about. I wasn't talking about uh, uh, the game that is going to be released on early access. I was talking about 1.0 version. That's my vision. You know, uh, that's that's what the game will become eventually. Right. So I was explaining uh, to them also, and they were they were pretty much interested in everything. They were impressed, and I, I told them that. We will make sure that our game uh, uh, will be the best looking game on uh, Unreal Engine. My exact words. And yeah, in regards uh, of MMO games, uh, multiplayer games, because uh, uh, because if you if you have like uh, single player games, uh, they have much more freedom to to you know, especially if if, if it's like a story limited, it's now open world. Uh, then uh, basically you have much more uh, opportunities to make things much better. But if you want to scale things, then simply the quality has to be reduced a little bit. But still, uh, you know, we, we can do a lot. 
So, so I, I, I was telling them uh, uh, about the scam and, and our plans and everything, and they were impressed. They asked us again, how big is your team? And we told like, I think 10 or 12. And they, were, they didn't believe, you, you could see that they didn't believe us uh, that we would <laughs> manage to do it. So they, it's kind of a good thing because they accepted uh, our advanced and lowered the percentage of the money, uh, uh, you know, uh, for oh, due, licensing. Due to, due to the size of your team? Yeah, because they didn't believe that we, we would, you know, eventually finish or release the game. So yeah, they so, probably, uh, probably like, yeah, we'll just take these guys' money and, you know, if they finish it. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. That, right. yeah, literally like, like that. So, so the next year, Fortnite comes out, and uh-huh. it's a huge. Yeah, you know, it's it's a, it's a fucking big hit. Everything we can we can think, you know, uh, to ourselves whatever we want about Fortnite, but it's a, it's a huge game. Chance saying the of, game's name was Paragon. Uh, yeah, it's a Paragon was there before. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah, so they basically quit that uh, game they, to, to start this side project uh, uh, that evolved eventually Fortnite. So we're meeting again with Epi guys uh, to discuss about uh, progress, about possibilities to, you know, to do marketing and everything. And we meet the other two guys from Epix, uh, uh, Epix team. Uh, I will not tell names or, or something like that. No, no, it doesn't it's... matter. But also, you know, high, highly ranked, let's say, uh, uh, people in, in Epic. Uh, and you, uh, they enter the room, like, they're, like, uh, half asleep. They had, like, tags with, with Fortnite, you know, and everything. And I started talking, and, and they literally didn't, you know, hear anything I was saying. But they were so uh, under impression of Fortnite and how big is it that they basically ignored all the meeting uh, they were like just playing along you know no, sitting say, there but nodding their heads was, uh-huh. mm-hmm. yeah so but, but oh. it, it was it was obvious that basically uh, they don't care yeah, uh, they, so so they, they, that, that's how much the company you know can be changed with one huge success right and for me that was fine i can understand that uh, you know i can understand that uh, uh, you have to earn, you know, uh, uh, you know, things, uh, respect and everything. So, and I earned, you know, respect many times for, from many people. And that was not issue for me. So, um, it's kind of okay because I didn't expect much from them. Uh, right. At the end. So they didn't really offer any kind of, any kind of assistance for you guys or, or any kind of like, Oh, Hey, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll mod this for you. You need this change here on the engine. We could do this. No, there was just, Take it and run with it. No, no, no. So uh, uh, how, how it worked for us? The moment we got released, uh, Epic heard about us finally, and even T- Team Sweeney uh, congratulated us on success and everything. And that, that, that's something that actually followed Scum all the way because nobody believed in the game, uh, starting from you know, uh, uh, except for you know one of our co-investors. But Devolver didn't much believe in the game. You know, really? Epic didn't believe in the game. Yeah, really. So, so and, and so it ended up being one of, of their bigger hits. You know, that that year too for it. I mean, it's it's, it's amazing that they weren't really. It's kind, of, it's kind of hard to get guys to follow your passion. You know, you know, you're sitting here. Yeah, but but you know, it's it's kind of normal. There are many games outside, and and what we learned from talking with much bigger publishers than Devolver is that. Even the huge guys, you know, uh, cannot tell which which game will be, you know, like hit uh, f- from their perspective, and 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 uh, uh, they always like, uh, you know, they always like watching things from the money perspective. So if right, some, yeah. something is earning money a lot, then basically it's 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 a good game. If it's not, if it's not, then you know they have uh, to 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 devote uh, their time to something else. So uh, uh, how it works with Epic is that uh, uh, Unreal Engine, I said that before, was built a uh, long time ago. It was built right. on platform that supports doesn't support uh, MMO games. Uh, if it wasn't for PUBG, uh, uh, if it wasn't for, for Fortnite later, uh, Ep- Epic probably wouldn't be able to, to run Scum properly. So uh, we, we were pretty much lucky because they finally started to do changes regarding uh, massive multiplayer stuff, streaming and everything. Yeah, yeah, because they, they got the money uh, from those games because they became wildly popular, your PUBGs. And your, yes, yeah. yes. So, so, so the thing is that, uh, uh, and how, how it worked is basically, uh, uh, we had 
the head game uh, scam is pretty much bigger than PUBG, pretty much bigger than Fortnite regarding uh, uh, options, regarding stuff that we have in the game, regarding the number of items, everything. Oh, yeah. So Unreal Engine uh, uh, by itself cannot, you know, like uh, 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 keep all these things and, and run the game properly. Uh, uh, we as, you know, professionals uh, have built our own engine. Uh, we're like, we were thinking that uh, if we were like engine, uh, Unreal Engine developers, then we would probably do uh, things like something, uh, uh, you know. Uh, but basically, they didn't do it like that because they they didn't build engine for you know master multiplayer right. games. And and some things were completely stupid and wrong from that perspective. Uh, if you if you decide to make a, a massive multiplayer game game, uh, so so uh, a lot of things that. Uh, were needed for the game uh, were actually uh, were done by us by modifying Unreal Engine. All the time we uh, be before we start modifying things, we uh, notify uh, Epic. Epic uh, sometimes responds in a way, "Yes, we know about that. We are doing on this feature. It will be in that in that version." Okay. Or they or they tell us, "No, we don't have any plans to do this kind of thing." Or they simply change stuff, and and when we go to the another, you know, uh, uh, higher version of Unreal Engine, uh, things get broken. So and, and so, you got to uh, you got to redo everything. <laughs> uh, not not well, everything, not but everything, a but lot of features, things. You know, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so 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 this is something that people, you know, our audience is not aware of uh, uh, because they they probably think um, um, I I think the majority of people think that we're just doing features of the game features for the game but unfortunately we spend a lot of time uh, time and effort to to modify unreal engine uh, to make it work uh, for our oh, game okay. properly so so you guys are taking the base unreal engine and then modifying it hello hold on a second i don't know what just happened with my computer Un yeah Oh, hold on a second. I, 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 wasn't, I didn't have my mouse on the damn computer, and it fucking went. You know, I don't know if you know this, but for some reason, if in Windows, for some reason, when you go into power saving mode, if you set the sleep settings to fucking never, they always go back to yes. some, something else, and it's a pain in the fucking ass. And I didn't have my mouse on, <laughs> on, the, uh, on, the, uh, on the computer the, the whole time, and I ended up... Uh, What's your call? This computer went to sleep, so my bad. So yeah, I... sure, no problem. Let All me right. drink a little bit. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so we have a special branch uh, of uh, version, let's say version internal version of Unreal Engine uh -huh. that we're keeping, and we're always uh, uh, trying to follow, uh, you know, the next version of Unreal Engine that uh, uh, comes out. For example, Arc, uh, uh -huh. Survival Evolved. Um, it's been stuck on really old Unreal Engine version, so right. uh, uh, you know they cannot uh, improve the game in any way except to do everything by their own. But they also don't benefit with any kind of things that you know Epic guys do. Uh -huh. So it's quite so it's quite important, and that's my advice to all people, to all developers that are making games, especially like this one on Unreal, Unreal Engine. Please devote time to to you know to follow. Uh, Epic uh, and their progress and upgrade the game uh, uh, because Epic still does a lot of stuff. Uh, they they have wonderful things coming that we simply with our you know manpower wouldn't be able to do. Uh, so so we are currently at 4.24. Uh, next week we are switching to 4.25, then to 4.26, and after 4.26, you know what comes next? 5.0. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Scam will be probably released in 1.0 version on Unreal Engine uh, 5.0, okay. which is so great. So what, what, what now? Now does does Epic tell you guys like, hey, this is what we got coming down the pipe. Here's what's coming in 4.25, and then you guys got to uh, make you guys got to plan ahead and say, oh, well, we got to change this and we got to change this because that's no, going to screw no, this up, or no. or they just dump uh, it on you and then you got to figure it out. No, 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 no. Uh, we don't have any direct contacts with Epic. Oh, okay. uh, uh, we are not that big, and that that's that's fine. Uh, I, I, 
Mo most likely, if you have like Add AAA companies a doing, uh, uh, nice you know, lovely. games on, on a real engine, they have direct contact. We have like direct link uh, and and have like contacts to uh, to talk to, but we're ne never like personally, uh, you know, They're... notified about something. So oh. we basically uh, we we get newsletter or you know YouTube video about the the next uh, features of Unreal Engine as anybody else. So we're not special there. Oh, so so the uh, four two five comes okay, along. Taron, yeah. Uh, can I just interrupt you? I would like to get one more beer. I will be back. Yeah, in yeah. Your, come on, like, back. Go, go grab a, a beer. You, you, yeah, just a second. See, now that's interesting. Now, people, you know, don't realize that uh, this is, uh, you know, they, they're going to drop a new new Unreal Engine patch, and uh, they're going to have to figure out what to do then. To, that they might change things in the game that might, you know, it's not like uh, I, I didn't know that. I didn't. I thought they would more accommodating for their. Uh, uh, I'm back. All right. Okay. See, I, I thought they would be more accommodating to you, and I figured that they might have recognized you guys due to your popularity. But so, when say when four two five comes out, you just get that update, and then you have to figure out what you have to change and what you don't have to change, right? Yes, yes, um, that's how it works. Which, and, and which, it's fine. And, it's fine. Now, is is there a lot of is there is there times where you like you get an unreal patch and you're like motherfucker, I can't believe they did that. I did not want them to do that because you know each I time. like that old feature. Each, each, each time. time. <laughs> So is there anything you're, you're looking yeah. forward to that you know about, like as far as like maybe the lighting thing that they talked about in 5.0? Yes. I mean, uh, the game yeah, really we are, we are, yeah, we're actually looking forward to everything. So um, any kind of improvement, uh, especially uh, in optim from the optimization perspective, it's great for us. Right. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, Unreal Engine is currently, uh, you know, one of the best engines in the world that can be licensed, probably the best one that can be licensed. Right. Uh, um, obviously, there are other engines that you cannot license, uh, but they're proprietary. Like, they're but, used, you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they're used for uh, making games like Frostbite Engine and others. Yeah, right. Which right. are also yeah, we, we are, which are also great. Uh, uh, but the great thing about Epic and uh, the great thing about <coughs> sorry about the uh, thing that uh, happened with Fortnite is that they uh, changed the way how they think and how they approach developers. So they're really trying to push and help, uh, 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 you know, to grow communities that will make games right. on Unreal Engine because that's the, basically that's the future for the engine. Because right now, uh, uh, right now there is no, like, really uh, uh, any point of having your own engine. Back then, 20 years ago, there were a lot of different game engines, a lot of them. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of work that you, do, you don't really want yeah. to do. You know, it takes away Absolutely. from, you know, you're, you're spending all your time doing that shit and then you don't have enough time to make the game that, you know, it's a lot of, it's the back end yeah. work that you don't want to deal with. Yeah, but you know, from the perspective of average programmer, uh, uh, you know, their baby is, uh, is considered their engine. Right. The, the, I, 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 you know, I'm one hundred percent right that if you if you take any programmer, they would rather have their uh, the, the, their games made on their own engine than anything else. Right, because they 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 control everything and they know what's what. You know, and you don't have the yeah, but the they chain. they simply cannot do anything with right. it because <laughs> they cannot compete. Right, uh, right. I, mean, I I I saw it. I saw this so many times, uh, starting from Crow Team, then I. Uh, uh, also, you know, my company, then other companies, Croatia, they're trying to, you know, push their own engines, their own technology. They're bragging that the, they have specific features. And they're always like, sorry, a couple of steps behind of, uh, uh, let's say, Unreal or, 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 or Unity. Right. And and still, uh, uh, when, was, when I was in, in, in Crow Team, uh, uh, we actually managed to sell a serious engine for a couple of games. Uh-huh. And, what and games that were was, those? Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I think that uh, the first version of of the Hunter, uh, it's it currently it's Hunter: The Call of the Wild, uh -huh. uh, was the is is a sequel that is currently on Steam. But the first version of the Hunter was made on on, on your guys' uh, engine? engine. Yeah, and and there oh. is a, a one also game with dinosaurs. Uh -huh. Dinosaurs. Uh, I know that because. Uh, uh, you know, back then, Series Engine was really well known about open spaces, about uh, you know, nice visuals, about a lot right. of 
uh, enemies and everything. But uh, you, it, it it wasn't about the engine. You you uh, uh, it was how you use it. Right. So we we had like specific things that we had to do to make this kind of uh, world running really well. And uh, when you license the engine, basically when when they sell you, and we actually bought, we have licensed the Unreal Engine. Uh, you you actually by 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 think uh, uh, the same way as as uh, you know average uh, uh, player buys the buys the game. So you you just see the marketing materials. And it looks fantastic, and Maybe. you buy it, and then you're, and then, <laughs> then you unfortunately cannot refund like games. But <laughs> yeah. you, you get into it, and you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's pretty much safe to say you guys are probably pushing the limits of this engine. Absolutely, absolutely. That, more more than anybody, weird. more than anybody else. I mean, you look at like you know what just released was. Um, uh, squad just released they're on the unreal engine mm-hmm. and i always tell people are like oh that's a fun game they're like oh if it only just looked as good as scum it would be the best game ever and i'm like well you know these guys are pushing the limits and, and not everybody has the ability to do so and and, and it's yeah it's, unfortunately, it, unfortunately what, this this takes a lot of uh, years of experience there right yeah so. yeah and it's not like you just can't do this shit overnight and you know that was my whole point is to get the kind of behind the scenes. I mean, like you guys, you guys are pushing the limits of the engine. You guys, you guys have this passion for this game. And, you know, I, I mean, you guys have like, what drives you creatively to like, you know, to come up with this. I know I, I read that you, you, you thought that the, the, the genre for survival games was kind of lacking. And, and it has been because it's one of those, it's one of those fucking unicorn games that everybody wishes they had. Mm. And they don't really yeah. have a, a direct idea what they want. They just want this open world game where they could fucking do whatever they want. And they want zombies and they want this and they want that. And it's, mm-hmm. and it, and it's been a lot, there's been a lot of mods and stuff. So what, like what drove you creatively to go down this path and like, and, and as, as the game develops, like what, what are some of your inspirations to, to, to uh, besides yeah, community so, so, feedback and stuff like your own, your own inspirations? Yeah. So uh, uh, before we started working on Scum, we, we, I felt personally my most of my team didn't didn't uh, uh, feel like that. Uh, we were they were more like uh, into exploiting uh, our previous game and and not trying anything else. But I was always like, you know, I'm I'm game developer. I I'm, I'm doing games. I'm making games. Uh, I, it's, it doesn't matter what what type of the game. You know, uh, it's 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 as I said always. It's like you know, asking carpenter uh, if, if he's capable to to make a table if he's only making wardrobes. Of course, I am. So, so uh, I want to ex- exploit other type of t- type of games. Uh, before we made made racing games, uh, you know, we never made anything regarding racing. Before I was making serious sim, I never did anything re- related to 3D or shooting. Uh, before ma- making football ba- game, I never did. Any, anything similar, but I was playing these kind of games, and and you know, uh, I I sort of uh, felt the the overall experience that I get from this game and feeling and everything. So, uh, especially when you when you when you when you see that something is lacking in these kind of games and that something can be improved, and basically this is something that. Uh, you know, motivates you to 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 do something like that. So so before we start working on Scam, I was literally sure that we have to switch to something else because racing games simply didn't work uh, on PC well. Uh, uh, they worked well in a way that if you if you're big enough to make uh, uh, the game uh, for all platforms, then it's fine. Uh, uh, just for example, we uh, in Spain uh, we sold on PC. The same number of copies as Need for Speed. Really? You know, it's it's yeah. That that's that's uh, you know when you when you look at from that perspective, it's fantastic. But uh, these these are not like big numbers. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Need for Speed was selling much much more on consoles. Yeah. I'm talking about the uh, PC sales. So you obviously see, uh, uh, you know, that. Uh, People that are playing, uh, you know, specific type of games are on specific platforms. 
Uh, and, is that, was that, the, that was the gas guzzlers game? Yeah, that was that was the gas yeah. guzzlers. So, so, so the, the, when you learn this kind of thing, it it simply comes to your mind that just you, you cannot just like uh, randomly start working on the game. You have to be ca- careful. Uh, obviously, you have a lot about the games and everything, but you have to think about the monetization. It's really important because uh, eventually, you know, if if you make a game and uh, and you earn money, you that that allows you to hire more people to make better games. And uh, it's not like we all want to become Activision with with you know right. a lot of a lot of people that that didn't see any kind of development by themselves. And I, I've been to Activision booth on Gamescom, and it's huge. It's like a city. It's 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 something that you know it's something that's really hard to describe. Uh, uh, but you know, uh, I also understand uh, their like point of view and their like money factories and everything. But they still produce really good games, and and uh, uh, they they might be you know uh, mainstream, the most mainstream games. But they also provide quality and everything. But uh, most of the you know like Indian small developers do not dream about becoming Activision. They dream about making really good games and you know trying to make a living. Right, so, right. Uh, you, you don't. You don't want. You're, you're, you just don't want to grow your company at a point where you're like, buy my company for a couple billion, and I'm going to go live on my personal island. You know, you you're doing it for the game and for the love of what you're doing, not not to. Yeah. Not to. Yes. Not, not Pers- to get rich. Personally, yeah. Personally, if you ask me, if I ever get enough money, I will do game, games for, for free. The the only thing that uh, people will have to pay if they want to, you know. Um, Give a give a negative review. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you want to say something bad about the game, which was free, then give me ten bucks, and then fine, I will listen. Right. So I'm not sure if this monetization would work, but you know, no, it, I, it, it's uh, it's definitely it's definitely you could see that it's a labor of love, and that, and and it, and it bothers me when you see other people or you see comments. Especially from, you know, you, here you are, you're a successful guy, you're intelligent, you've had years of experience, and then you got some, some dude who's living in his grandma's basement or something like that telling you your game is shit. And you're like, come on, man, what the fuck, you know? You're like, hey, thanks for buying my game, but seriously, you know, you know yeah. it, it's, 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 it's got to be frustrating. I'm sure, I mean, at, at times you probably, you know, you, you just turn a blind eye, but at, every once in a while does it just... You're just like Jesus, man. I don't get it how these fucking guys have no idea what's going on. Yeah, does, it, does it ever? Does it ever get to you? Always. And the thing is that uh, you, when you, sorry, when you sort of see these kind of things happening, then you hire community managers as a filter. And you, yeah, <laughs> and, right, right, and right. Of, you, you pay people that suffer. Uh, because of that, uh, I'm I'm joking, of course. I was I I remember, I remember period where I was before the release. I was uh, constantly uh, active on Steam community pages. Right. And, and uh, I knew that at the moment of the release, I probably wouldn't be able to handle uh, 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 the the huge amount of negativity that will that will come. Uh, not because of because of the game and and the condition that uh, it was. In uh, back then, but uh, the the toxicity of whole this kind of genre. Uh, yeah. And if, if you if you look all the other games that are similar to Scam, they have really similar kind of people playing it and similar reaction, emotions, and everything. Right. Um, yeah. So so I, I basically decided to, which was right now. I think that it was it was bad move. I, I should should you know show more more balls and and I should. With community and everything, be more active on 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 Steam forums. Uh, I, I basically re- redraw myself and uh, and sort of let uh, left uh, com- our community managers to handle everything, which they did great, you know. But I I, I felt that at that point it would drive me crazy, you know, to uh, you know to try to to persuade everybody that the game will eventually will be a good game. So. You know, I yeah. I don't know how you feel about that, but for me that was really really hard. Uh, much much easier for me was to you know simply to work each day you know for ten twelve hours per day on the game and and show them uh, through updates that the game will be good instead of you know trying to persuade them uh, right. in in some some text or or or, or you know chat or whatever. 
No, and I and I I, I I like the fact that you guys don't sit there and and, and defend the game. You, I, I just you know I, I see it as from the outside in, and I and I know that you guys what you guys are doing is not an easy task, and 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 it it it, it, it bothers me to see people doing that, but. At the same time, you know, it's like you guys are extremely open with the community. I mean, I've never seen any kind of developers, you know, listen to people. Like, I mean, I know originally you guys were not thinking about doing base building. And then, you know, no. the community wants the base building, the base building, the base building. And then you fucking put it in the game. I mean, seriously, who who does that? <laughs> you know, I mean, you got, yeah, I mean, you're, you're active on Twitter. You talk to people. You're, you're constantly putting out these... Uh, these little these little snippets and stuff ah. to keep people interested and it's like nobody does that i mean who the fuck i mean you're sitting here talking with me i'm some schlub you know that's you know nobody on fucking twitch <laughs> and we're sitting here having a conversation i mean it's like who the fuck does that i mean if i was going to go to you know any other game and be like hey would you like to do an interview on my twitch channel they tell me to go fuck myself you know <laughs> no no actually actually for me this is the best part really uh, I, I was I was, uh, you know, uh, when, when we were talking about Twitter, uh, I, I started using Twitter maybe two months ago, and I was a little bit, you know, uh, reluctant to the whole idea of, uh, I'm an old guy. Yeah, I'm I the same way. I'm, 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 I'm an old guy. I still don't fucking know how to use it. I like, someone notifies me. I'm like, which tweet are they talking about? Who the fuck said that? Yeah, it's a pain in the fucking ass. It. I'm like, what the yeah, fuck is this so, shit? So, uh, uh, and, 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 First couple of days, uh, there were a couple of really rude people there. And uh, for me, it was like uh, if somebody DMs me a message which is not polite, it's like coming to my door, to my apartment, you know, right. and yeah. being, being disrespectful. It's the right. same thing. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're kind, coming to my space, uh, whether it's like real space in real world or internet world, please behave, show some respect. Right, right. I, 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 only thing that I ask is respect. After that, you can say about the game whatever you want, in, but you have to do it in a respectful way. Respectful way. So, uh, but luckily, uh, I, I, I'm not sure how much followers I, uh, I have right now, but all you people that joined up later, <laughs> jo joined up later, uh, were awesome. Yeah. I, I was so amazed. I was so amazed that you know. People reacted like that, uh, and I wrote before, you know, a couple of weeks ago that actually the best part for me is the, of this job that I do uh, is all the people that you know probably would never wanted to meet me <laughs> if it wasn't for scam, and, and and you know to 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 just to talk to you, you know, to talk with uh, with other people, to share ideas, and for let's say today, I, I was like. Uh, from 10, 10 a.m. up to almost like uh, 8 p.m., I was out uh, doing shopping or, you know, doing stuff for family and everything. And I was constantly trying to respond a lot on all the messages on you... Twitter. Uh, and and uh, in this, like, of time frame of maybe, let's say, eight hours, I think that I sort of received and forwarded at least 12 different requests for, you know, uh, add-ons for the game. Yeah. So that's, I mean, for, that's, that's for me, that's great. People have really good ideas, great ideas. It's sometimes it's a bit difficult to, uh, to try to explain something which I feel that it doesn't work. So right. they, people want to, you know, defend their opinions and everything. But in mo most cases, you know, People who approach me are really respectful. Really, you know, like you know, sorry, sorry, dude, uh, uh, if I'm bothering you, uh, you know, really, uh, they're like modest and everything. Uh, uh, like, you know, really, they become really happy if I just, you know, give them some any kind of answer, which is sort of my uh, responsibility. I was kind of shocked if, that you actually responded to me when I when I, I messaged you, you know, and, and the, the, the initial conversations were pretty cool. And, I, and the fact that you take the time to fucking answer people throughout your day and on your weekend and to sit on a Saturday night talking to some schmo in Chicago is is is, <laughs> is, is fucking is awesome and, and, and shows the dedication. And the thing is, now your Twitter is, is whatever the fuck you put out on Twitter is then magnified by every fucking person out there it's on every social media page boom tom 
Tom has put this out. Oh, look at this. This is coming. The wolves. Boom, boom. I mean, you, fuck. I, I open my phone. I get up at four o'clock in the morning. I open my phone and I, and I, I go to a social media page and I see your shit everywhere. It's like it's you. You've got yourself. You, you're you're literally a, a megaphone now for the game and and, you, and and the stuff that you drop is is awesome and and you keep and you yeah. keep everybody entertained too and, and that's that's the great thing because I. I wake up every morning. I'm like, all right, what's he gonna say today? You know, what's going on today? <laughs> you know, uh, I I know that sometimes I I, I like to troll people a lot. Uh, I like to you know, oh, make yeah, jokes you and all, at, yeah. at my own expense also. At, and I, I I will be first to admit that something is wrong in the game. So, you know, but I also uh, defend really really you know hard work of of my team and that and all the hours they put in the game. That that might uh, not be you know like. Um, uh, they 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 are not um, might uh, aware of this kind of thing because uh, in 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 last uh, talks with our our guys in the company they they have complained about lack of the communication and blah 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 you know people usually complain a lot about yeah. stuff so so uh, but you know I'm really really <coughs> sorry. That was a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm really, really, I'm really proud, uh, proud of uh, all members of of uh, our small team, and I'm also proud with, uh, with uh, you know, talking to you and and meeting all other peoples and uh, having conversation. Uh, 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 it's like, from from my perspective, it's, it's like uh, I have a dream. I have something that I would like to make. I sort of. You know, live for it. Uh, 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 most of my, you know, each day, uh -huh. and there are like a lot of people that want 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 to be part of that kind of thing. It's it's you know, yeah, the everybody. Best thing there's, in the there's world. a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of people that want to be a part of it. I mean, there's just the, you. The core community of scum is 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 is, is tight and and it's growing. And I that that's one thing I always do is like as I when i'm streaming i always want to get new people to come in and someone comes and says i don't have scum i'm like well here you, you know you need a copy of fucking scum get your ass in here because it's like you, you, you just there's so many people that w would love to play this game but you just got to get it out there and let people know about it and mm -hmm. you know i don't know it, it it's let me, let me ask you this. What, what's a typical day over at Game Pires? Like, I, I, you know, I get, I get some questions here. Like, like, what kind of PCs are you guys running over there? What, what do you got? You know, is it, a, is it a grind? Is it more of a, you got, you got your departments? Or is it more of a collective team meeting where you guys are feeding, uh, feeding off each other? I mean, that's, uh, you know, and you, you go in, are you, you're, you're, the, you're the creative brains. And do, now, this is it like a trickle-down effect. Like, what kind of project management do you use to get your ideas down to the guys who are doing the programming and the sounds and stuff to make the magic happen uh well you know uh i have to be honest we don't have like a uh, proper project management tool I, I was looking for something uh i think me and you talked a little bit about that yeah I mentioned I, I still, yeah i still i still didn't yeah. have time to check yours but it's, I will a, it's actually pretty good. It's got a lot of the things you were talking about, but yeah, I definitely would give that. Yeah, a look. Uh, I uh, I will check in the following weeks because uh, we are in the sort of reorganization of the company and we are stepping on another, let's say, a, le a level of uh, uh, you know of organization because of the growth and and uh, and demands of, uh, of employees and everything. So. Uh, but basically, I'm I'm really really simple guy. Uh, you know, when I <laughs> the, the first thing when I was joining the server, I was accidentally instead of uh, boom, I was I, I wrote boob, <laughs> 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 like boob the, boob room, the boob room, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. nothing showed. So yeah. uh, uh, I, I'm I'm a simple guy. When I see boobs, I press like. So that, that's how yeah. I function. I function yeah. that, uh, all my way. life. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, I try to keep things simple as possible. Now, uh, these simple things might work for some people, but some people need a little uh, bit more structure. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, request more like corporative stuff, which personally I hate, but yeah. not all of them. I am still like trying to be, uh, you know, like honest to myself that not company of six uh, 
you know, like friends, we now have people that rely on us that want some, uh, you know, things to be on a higher level, maybe because they, they, they have seen it in movies or read, read it in the right. books or whatever, which quite annoys me, you know, but still uh, there are some expectations that I have to, 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 to meet uh, at the company also. So, yeah, uh, so far we have, uh, we, we, our, our sort of uh, work was, uh, the whole of the process and everything was done in a way that uh, I made decision for the next iteration what will be done by uh-huh. taking stuff from the game design document. Game design document is pretty much detailed. It's a little bit outdated because I haven't uh, updated it regularly uh, with all the changes that we made. And that's your, that, that's your vision of what you feel should be going towards 1.0? Is that, I mean, that's... What yes, absolutely. So, uh, and I'm sure that, uh, that's constantly evolving based on things that you learn or some experiences you have and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's actually um, um, evolving more by uh, community itself uh-huh. than, uh, than, than with um, my ideas. My ideas are still like there we're still lacking a lot of features that i have planned for the game and uh there they will be uh, added eventually now now the what, what i'm trying to say that uh, when I'm, when we're talking about features uh, each and every feature of the game is like my little baby so right. uh, each time i, I pick the, um, the the features that will be made in uh, the next iteration they're always like choosing favorite you know kid uh you know compared to some other kid or whatever you know you have to choose which is your favorite right uh, right right you're like oh you have to pay more attention to this than that over there yeah that's your that's yeah, your we, baby yeah. you know yeah we, which is really really crazy because i want everything uh, in in the game right now actually yesterday right. so uh it's it's always like picking uh uh, thematically you know you, you pick some theme and then try to to you know to see what what will be good from not only the development side from features but also from marketing because we want to present uh these kind of features to our community and to new players so that we have like the whole package sorted out so that this usually starts with like a really short let's say two pager document with like major things added let's say like boats fishing uh you know like sea life like I don't know vehicles, like shooting from vehicles and everything. And uh, uh, this document uh, document is passed to uh, leading like team leads, uh-huh. uh, different team leads. So we, we have, have like a meeting when uh, I pass the document and I tell them that I would like to see these kind of things in the game. And uh, I uh, start asking question uh, questions like uh, when, <laughs> like and, page and, when, right, like, right. like people do. So, and they, they, they hmm. start they start giving you their personal timelines and fleshing stuff out for you. So say yeah, I can get that done by this, and then, but I'm still working on this, and we got this, and yeah, and, yeah. You know. So 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 the next step is to uh, you know to uh, take all uh, of these features separately and and describe them as detailed as possible. Try to predict all shitty things that might happen. We usually fail uh, in this area this, this, this area the thing is that you cannot predict uh, right. you know something in in the in the game of of this magnitude uh, it's always something that that happens and and, uh, and you simply have to have to learn that there is always like uh, you, you always will have to do some iterations you know right. to to until you get a uh, thing to 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 start working as as planned for example so uh, uh, after we, you know, put a lot of details on all of these tasks, all of these like major features, then we will go with time frame. And I usually add like uh, when they tell me, uh, you know, when something will be uh, finished, I, I summarize everything so that I have like roughly uh, uh, the, the release date in my head and I can plan uh, marketing for it also. Uh, 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 should we make like a teaser? Should we make like gameplay video? Right. Uh, you know, should we uh, you know see what is like interesting for streamers? You know, and and stuff like that. And uh, and usually I add like let's say 25% of more uh, more time to to their numbers because uh, obviously there will be bugs. I'm sorry, and the things that will have to handle in the meantime that right. uh, we we always forget like switching. On a couple of new versions of Unreal Engine, uh, I believe that the, the switching 
for for from 423 to 424 took us almost uh, three or four weeks because it was really too complicated. So so these kind of things, uh, uh, when you're switching versions, then everything literally stops uh, in the background. Right. All your all, uh, all and, your all your progression for your added goodies kind of goes on hold because that's more important. Yeah, yeah, more out. more or less, right. more or less. It it it, it it's, it's put up, put on hold because many things are changing in the background. Right. So uh, you, uh, people cannot submit changes because there is like two branches. One branch is new engine, and the, the second is the old one. Right. So you have you have to manage these kind of things. It's it's a little, little bit complicated and messy. So. Uh, after this uh, this step, then uh, when we have final plan and people start working, uh, and we sort of uh, try to make each of these this, this actually these plans we actually make for each big update, uh -huh. uh, uh, like you know each one that goes with uh, you know like one more percentage in iteration. So let's let's say from uh, 0.1 to 0.2, uh, this this kind of updates. So, so uh, in the meantime, we also plan uh, this kind of two weekly or three weekly updates of uh, stuff that was requested by the community, uh, which are, let's say, easier to implement. There are stuff that are requested from the, from the community which are not easy uh, that we, you know, uh, leave for the for, for later or maybe include in some bigger bigger updates. Uh, so. so in parallel, while doing this like huge update, we're always trying to, you know, release uh, at least two updates per month uh, with like smaller stuff. But I'm, I, I wouldn't say not important because everything that, that comes from the uh, community is quite important. Now, how many updates uh, have you done since the beginning? Because I could swear there's got to be at, le at least two a month for the last two years. Uh, in 90, 90 for uh, 90, 90 updates in, 90, in 90 two years. patches, 90 patches. That's that's incredible. I mean, that's to me, that's to, right there when people say, Oh, yeah, they don't have to do anything or whatever. Like, how the fuck yeah. do you, how can you say that? You think 90 patches in two years? Yeah, this is, uh, I, I think that there is no developer and and prove me wrong. Uh, that that managed to do something like that, especially yeah. with like uh, 15 or 30 people and doing a game like this. Yeah. So, and I remember at the uh, beginning I, when you guys would have two, three patches a week. You know, there'd be something you'd release, yes. something, something would break, or something would something really weird would happen. Like uh, we had an issue where we would you spawned on your you got killed and you spawned on your squad mate and it crashed the fucking server and everyone was like, no, that's not happening. And I remember people yes. saying it and yes, people, little shit like that. And then boom, you got another hot fix or a patch out. Cause you guys always were worried about the community and, and the game to, you know, keep going forward. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, I, I think that the game wouldn't survive, uh, uh, wouldn't survive if, if the, the, if we uh, were not doing this kind of thing. Yeah. Without the, think, without the you know, dedication, you guys, you guys definitely, fucking the most dedicated dev crew i've ever seen and that that is the that is the reason you guys are successful you know and the fact that it you know if you you listen to the community the, you're sitting here and telling me well you know I, we the community puts this in and then we put it in the game like that's fucking awesome i mean you could do whatever yeah, you want the that, game yeah that's the whole that's the whole point of early access and and the yeah. game you know we are at each second in development we are aware of the state of the project uh, uh, we are aware that people who buy the game might have really high expectations, which are not met, but will be met eventually. Right, right, right. And, and, no one ever and, reads and that fucking that, giant sign at the beginning of the game. Nobody ever nobody, does. Nobody, nobody. It but, could be, but, you could fucking, you should put it in voice. This is an early access game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but the thing that, what I think is that if we show respect to players by, you know, putting a lot of work, putting a lot of updates, sooner or later, they will have to admit that we, you know, try really hard to make this game, you know, as best as possible. Yeah. As good as possible. So so that, that's, the, that's the whole idea. And uh, it took us a lot of time, uh, uh, not, not not just us, but, you know, to community to recognize us. And, and uh, hard work always pays off. So oh, yeah. always. Always. Uh, uh, so that, that's that's the that's the uh, uh, you know like investment that you cannot fail. Uh, and and I advise to all other you know like developers who have developed or published uh, uh, survival games that if they start stop working on the game, 
you know that's it they have to they have to you know maintain the the they have to show that they're care that they that, that they care and the people will continue playing the game yeah it well you know and and you guys have so it's many Roblox that. like you got the you got the unreal engine that you have to okay that you got the new update comes out so you got to push everything aside we got to deal with that and you know what other big so I mean right now you guys what when you started scum how how many guys did you have on the team and how many guys do you have currently uh so when we started scum there was like six of us Six. Uh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. Then we, then we, uh, we had like three months to uh, learn Unreal Engine, uh-huh. uh, which was crazy, but we managed to do it. Uh, at mm-hmm. least learn enough uh, and, and start. Yeah, and and start <laughs> to sort of start working in good faith that everything right. will be okay. <laughs> and yeah, now, so, how many so, how many guys you got now? Uh, it's 34 or, 30, or 35. 35? Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure comp- well, you know, precisely because we're hiring people all the time. And they're... We have, currently we had, have like 15 scheduled interviews for programmers. Right. The goal is that, that we sort of double the programming team because uh-huh. it's obviously that uh, our, uh, you know, the, the bottleneck are currently programmers and they are like doing really, really, you know, hard stuff. And uh, it's it's hard to, when you have to code the feature, but uh, at the same time, you have to fix bugs for a previous feature. And usually so- somebody like me is coming around and uh, bugging you with, with stuff uh, that the community wants. Right, right. So uh, our programmers are under a lot of pressure and uh, uh, we simply, simply, you know, have to, you know, hire more and uh, hopefully we'll succeed in that. And... Uh, our plan is, you know, one of the one of the plans that are not uh, on on that list that uh, Raykit has uh, uh, has been talking about on 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 the on, on the Q and A last week uh, was actually uh, uh, increase increasing the size of the team, uh, uh, which we probably should 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 have been doing uh, you know earlier, but. Uh, it's it's always but, in development. But you have so many tasks to do, right? Yeah, and you have to and you have to you know uh, uh, introduce a couple of new guys in in the project. So that means that somebody will have to devote their times, you know, to getting the guy up to speed to, and you know, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, and it's really hard, but you have to do it. You know, and you it, have to do it. it and it's not just fucking oh, click a switch and you got ten guys there. You know, there's there's you know, you, you, people are jagoffs. You could hire someone and be like, this guy's a fucking asshole. I don't want him in my business. Or you yeah, know, I mean, you, 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 or someone doesn't work with a team, or someone's always seeking conflict or something like that. So it's not yeah, it's not it's not yeah, it's not it's, it's not it's not, it's not a easy. You know, you're, you're dealing with people and getting the right people in the team to carry the vision down to fucking. Get yeah. the game done and 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 dedicate themselves because it sounds like these guys are fucking busting ass, you know. I mean, yeah, and- yeah, absolutely. And and you know, um, from from the pers- perspective of uh, employer, uh, you know, I, I'm not so picky, you know, in a way that I would I would just like uh, search for perfect, you know, developers because right. we are all like strange people and everything. <laughs> yeah, but they got their own nuances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I when I lined up all my guys in one room and and when i start talking about you know the results and everything about the game and and what we have succeeded so far i can actually actually you know read on all their faces you know the guys that are you know really enthusiastic that are you know sharing the vision and the other guys which are suspicious you know uh, the guys that, that they think that they know better right it's, yeah it's always the way so it's like Playing a game with them, right? You know, right. Uh, uh, like, there's always the, the, that guy. Oh, that, I don't. It shouldn't be done that way. It's got to be done this way. Yeah, I, it's I all. It, that kind of you know, it's it's like, and I I, I cannot you know like uh, blame them, blame them or or you know something like that because uh, in certain period period of my life I was acting the same. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. young young guns but, are always that way. <laughs> it's you know? always like that. Yeah. So it's 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 always like grass is greener in somebody else's yard or something right, like right, that. Or right. you should be doing stuff because I read the book. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I worked and, here and, and it did that and it fucking was successful. But you know, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you know, these kind of things are a little bit annoying, uh, but it's part of my job, unfortunately, right now. Right. I did. I, if, if somebody told me that, you know, in in time, I'll be doing things like that. Uh, I don't know. I, I would probably say no. 
you know, because you know it's it's uh, it's it's really you know you know kind of sometimes it's really kind of uh, depressing when uh, when you see people not believing in the things they're doing. But right. then again, uh, it's uh, it's actually my job to you know to try to explain them or, or share them you know some sort of uh, vision or mot- give them motivations to to achieve achieve uh, achieve greater things because basically that's what, what leaders do uh, right and you gotta you're, you gotta be doing something right because you got these guys working for you and you got these the things are happening and if people don't see that stuff's happening they're obviously fucking blind i mean yeah absolutely and, 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 with, and with, with all the roadblocks and i mean i, I was going to ask you another thing like as far as roadblocks what do you guys how do you you know with, there's obviously you got the 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 guys and people who cheat at games how much of your guys time do you guys have to fuck with the game just because some assholes circumventing your system and cheating oh. and, 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 ru- and ruining your experience for your players who want to play the game so, so, so uh, let, let me give you one example last okay. week uh on friday uh i had the interview with with reiki on uh, saturday and sunday i was ch- chasing a hacker because uh, some german guy approached me uh, on twitter and asked me for help so all the weekend I was sort of chasing for uh, for a hacker, which eventually turned out to be uh, a legal player, and I didn't find anything, you know, like weird. They're just like skillful, right, right. Which right. is something that is really, really hard to to see sometimes from the player's perspective. Uh, but we spend a lot of time. Yeah, I think that that the last time that as guys uh, that we issue at least uh, uh, twenty bands per day 20 bands a day and, yeah 20, 20 bands a day uh uh we have a lot of like uh we have like different type of bands so first time if you do something bad uh and usually uh you know easy anti-cheat is uh, is relatively good in detecting like basic stuff right, right. and it's it, it's it is always upgrading it's always upgrading and all right. this like all these softwares, uh, uh, anti-cheat softwares, are literally working the same way. So we, we have people on, on, on community pages on Discord, everything complaining that easy anti-cheat is not doing well. That maybe some some other you know software is doing better, but basically they are the same. The thing yeah, is that they all do the uh, same uh, shit. It might just be a different. Yeah, they 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 are, they are literally you know uh, the same thing. You know, uh, if we just switch to the to the other you know app. It will most likely will be you know a little bit better or a little bit you know worse, literally the same. So uh, what what people don't understand is that you know world of hacking, world of you know cheaters and everything is so well developed. Uh, they have so many ideas. They're so uh, because especially because Unreal is open platform. So right, right. So they uh, can get into there and fucking find a little nooks and crannies. Yeah. So so, you get. so basically, even before the game gets released. Because of the engine and how it how it handles network code, you uh-huh. already have a lot of cheaters ready to do shit to your game. Uh, right. that, that actually works for many games, not only for Scam. Now, for Scam, it's kind of a good thing that we uh, you know make a lot of updates, uh, and that way you know they always have to upgrade. Let's the say cheats. the version of, of of whatever tool they uh, have to do. So eventually that become too tedious. But uh, it still depends on how the game is popular. For Scum, right. they're still doing regularly. We monitor that also. But uh, they're also like using stuff that you wouldn't believe. Like uh, uh, let's say uh, Easy Anti Cheat is uh, uh, detecting, you know, like uh, intrusions uh, uh, in the game from different uh, executable software. And let's say that you have like uh, uh, headphones, which uh, you are connecting to your PC and you're like listening to whatever, you know, game you're, you're playing or music or whatever right. you do. And basically you can download, uh, you know, like uh, some sort of cheat that sort of uh, uh, sticks to, uh, you know, this app from your, for, for your headphones and attacks the game so the game can disable anti uh, uh, easy anti cheat can disable uh, your headphones and but you have a problem because you know uh, that's not allowed that we actually you know disable the headphone if we detect that the headphones are or you know the software for the headphones is doing shit in the game 
uh, we cannot do things like that. And, and right. I'm just saying this as a as example. Right. That yeah. There, have, there might be uh, some software seen? for some ancillary equipment that they use to yeah. fucking get in, but yeah. you can't say no. That's not allowed because there's a lot of yeah, legit because, people using the software uh, the way it's supposed to be used. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm just saying about the creativity that you know hackers have. Right. Uh, uh, and it's it's literally ongoing battle. You know, uh, easy anti cheat is always like small step behind of. Of, of what uh, uh, people are actually doing. And uh, uh, as the game gets more popular, you will have more cheaters and hackers. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, personally, uh, what, what we can do in the future to, you know, to make these things, uh, you know, uh, to reduce these things as, as, as much as possible. Well, first, first thing is that we can make a good admin tools. So uh, uh, at least to give opportunity to admins, to private server owners, to be able to detect cheaters, you know, efficiently and and make some sort of, uh, uh, you know, like whitelist of of people that should be banned. That's right. right. And and now this is something that we'll definitely do in the future. Nice uh, Wait, but are you, a dude? Uh, uh, you you also have to know that we we receive so many, especially from Chinese, so many requests like, why did you ban me? I didn't do it. Da, da, da. Right, yeah, and we yeah. go through every fucking single one. Uh, and all all of them did it. All of them are, you know. <laughs> we didn't have like one oh, it example. My, it was my just little brother. One. It was my little brother. Yeah. He used my computer, yeah. man. That, 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 was that, that, was, that, that was like the major, uh, you know, like uh, thing. They said like, I have a brother. He didn't know what to do. Yeah. He accidentally started some sort of. Or the other thing, I didn't even play scum. I have like cheat for I don't know Call of Duty. Oh fuck you! <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. is the anti cheat detected? They cheat and you get banned. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. But it, so yeah, uh, it's crazy how they fucking they just and and there's in the it always blows my mind because it's not like there's any kind of monetary thing. You know what I mean? It's not like you're gonna win money because you're fucking cheating. No. You, you're not you, you. You just. It's just because you know someone on the somewhere on the other side of the internet is pissed off, and you're getting a fucking boner over it. And it it, it, yeah. it it just it doesn't sink in my mind. It's I'm like, how the fuck? And people spend hundreds of dollars on this shit. It's amazing yeah. for for, uh, yeah. for literally for nothing. I mean, you you say hard work is everything, and it, it and it is. But I mean, these people. You know, you're just playing a game here, and people are spending money to fucking just. Yeah, and, and the other thing is that when we issue hardware ban, so when we issue hardware ban, that person cannot, you know, play scum on that specific hardware. They have to buy a new, you know, like computer, oh, I, new see, I, I didn't know. I didn't know you guys do hardware bans. That's awesome. So yes, I, yes, I thought you yes, guys were just do doing that. like. I didn't. I didn't know you guys are doing that. So there's no oh, I'll slap you on the wrist here. Your Steam account's banned. Go fucking get another Steam account. And come yeah, back. Yeah, usually, usually, usually you we have like uh, three levels: first time, second time, and hardware ban. Oh, so this is how good. it works. Yeah, and and uh, actually, I, I we have one guy coming in the base. Is he okay? Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's gonna yeah. put a. He's gonna he put a does, light. He for doesn't. Us. Okay. Yeah. I will he, put my hands in the air. Yeah. He's hello. Just, yeah. I'm friendly. Don't <laughs> shoot me. No, I mean, and, and you know what? I think one of the best things you guys did for admins was is that the having that 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 fucking thank you that beam. Sorry, I d I didn't slept with your mother. It was the <laughs> other guy. No, you accidentally slept with his mother. That's how the cheaters always say. I'm, I don't know. One day, your mom was there, and I just accidentally fucked her. I don't know. It's my brother. It happens. <laughs> it, happens it happens, you know? But I, I think the, one of the best things you guys did was having that fucking beam come out of your head where admins can look, and you can see where the person's looking. Because we had some issues with people, and... I've, I've made videos of it where like there's a guy standing behind a wall and he looks and he snaps right to a guy on the other side of the uh -huh. wall undercover. And then he snaps to the other thing and you could see the line go right from guy to guy to guy. And you're like, all right, well, he's standing behind a wall. And why is he looking directly at three? To I could see it happens one time, but I've seen it go one, two, three, four. And I'm like, well, that's painfully fucking obvious, you know? And yeah, uh, you're yeah. like, uh that was, I think, probably the best thing out of all the admin tools that you could possibly have was one of the best yeah, things. Yeah, we, we, have, we have like three pages of, 
or two pages of stuff that you have requested, uh, uh, not, not not just like private server owners, but also our own testers because right, they are yeah, finding, yeah, yeah and uh, they're they're quite uh, frustrated also because uh, we we sort of uh, had so much programming power doing on doing features for the game, but not like doing stuff for admins. Uh, and and let's be honest, you know, uh, uh, private server owners have keeping this game alive for a long time. And and uh, you know really you know I would I would definitely love to hug you hug you and everything because I know uh, how much effort you know uh, my friends a couple of my friends that I'm really you know uh, uh, really close to and and that I met in these couple of years and are also private server owners how much effort they did to you know to you know provide players with things that. We plan to do and add to the game eventually, but they managed to do it through the fucking, you know, this bot that <laughs> it was yeah, not even planned for this kind of thing. Right. It's, 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 it's hilarious. I, I'm literally waiting for the moment that we open the game for modding, which should be fantastic, you know, and I really hope that at one point, uh, all version will be uh, fully open for, you know, modding the game and everything because uh, I, I, I was literally one... Uh, one day last week, I, I sent a send a send a screenshot of uh, uh, what was uh, you know PK what PK was doing with making hordes of of puppets. Right. And uh, and we have a task that says that we have to make like a, a option or whatever feature to allow uh, admins to define uh, you know the, uh, how the hordes will work and everything and put them on the server or whatever. And basically, you know, I had a, had a talk with programmers and it's all it, like it's complicated. It, it takes, you know, I have to uh, worry about this or that and everything. And then I have like PK sending me, you know, like screenshot, screenshot of, of, you know, like uh, a couple of commands for a bot that actually are doing this kind of thing. It's not, well, you know, from the perspective of, you know, programming and optimization, <laughs> this kind of thing is dangerous because it, May cause you know uh, frame drops, especially on on, on server. Right, right, but, yeah. But if if it's done carefully, if it's done done in a way that it's monitored, it's it's actually great. I've been doing some uh, <laughs> when I'm when I'm sort of bored and uh, and and I don't have anything to do, and and, and you know, when family uh, that I love uh, uh, leaves me behind, so uh, then I usually take a beer and, and pick. Pick a random server and then just spawn zombies, you know, puppets to <laughs> players. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and and then I read uh, their like uh, conversation in, in chat if they chat uh, between them, and in a couple of times, I, I, I'm not just like torturing them. I'm trying to make their game like interesting. Right, and right. And a couple always, of times, yeah, yeah, in a couple of times the response was. I didn't have so good, you know, like experience in this game until this time. It was hilarious. This was awesome. We barely survived. They, they basically didn't know that, at, you know, at the back back then at that time, I was actually, you know, spawning puppets in a way that I was, you know, monitoring them, trying them, uh, trying to keep them alive as possible, but give them, you know, a, 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 a Full thrill of everything, you know, of 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 uh, them just trying, you know, to be alive and and everything. And I know that that's great. I would definitely love to have like this this kind of thing that would that it, that would monitor uh, uh, all players uh, that are in certain area, the gear they they are having. Then you know, uh, uh, in a smart way, spawn specific NPCs or AI uh, yeah. opponents or you that, know, like animals. That would be awesome. And, yeah, and make things a little bit more complicated, but a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I mean, and that, that's what I always tell everybody. I'm like, you know, this is not a fucking... It, while you shoot people in this game, this is not a, a, a fucking game where you just go around murking people. It, you, it's a survival game, so you're, the goal is it's supposed to be hard to live. You know what I mean? You're supposed to die yeah. in this game. If it was easy, it wouldn't be any fucking fun. You know what I mean? So that's why we... we, we I kind of, you know... I've dabbled with the settings and you guys are just great about the fucking settings because, you know, while you say you would want the game modded, you guys allow the, the server owners to mod the game in a way, you know, with the smaller map now and you got the 
the circle, mm-hmm. the battle royale thing going, and then you got the the multiplier for the zombies and the loot and this and that and the fuck. I mean, you, there's so much shit you can fucking do, you know, without you know having a guy getting your code and modding your game and changing it up and you know making fucking you know whatever weird shit happen. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. but the you know it's it's just it's one of those things where like I I dabbled with the bot when it first came out and then it seemed like a lot of people got it and then the store and to me that was always like well it's a survival game if you can purchase anything now you're just turning it into a fucking shooter and mm-hmm. I I kind of lose loses the immersion for me and some people like it and and I think that's probably more for a casual guy who doesn't have the time to fucking sit hours upon hours and wants to just go in and shoot the fucking guns, shoot people, and then, you know, go to bed or do whatever he's got to do. Yeah, but, I, I, mean, I was, just, just as an example, I was showing to my friend uh, the, the, the one of your, you know, these, like, short clips when you uh, got killed because of this annoying bot that Oh, the fucking you. fame bot? Yeah. It's yeah, so... Fame. so uh, uh, <laughs> I'm 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 playing on on uh, official one official server and I'm introducing one of my old buddies from from college uh, who didn't play any games from Doom Doom One you know <laughs> Doom Eternal Doom One and yeah. he he's crazy about the game and everything so uh, uh, but uh, he he's always like rushing uh, he wants to get stuff quickly and then trying to explain that it's not the whole point and everything. Right. So I I have sent you uh, sent him your video, and he was like, you know, there's no fucking way I will you know like crawl for 15 minutes like that. There is no fucking way. And I'm trying to explain, but that's the whole point of right, the game. Right, right, yeah. The whole I mean, you know tactical approach, and then after this kind of thing, you actually succeed in what you're trying to do. The reward is much bigger than just exactly. like rushing around rainbow and you know killing a exactly. couple of people. You know, so uh, I I I know that you know scum can be played in different ways, especially because we have a lot of that uh, you know to have this like battle royale feeling. But that's not the whole point. You know, the purpose or the vision that we are planning to 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 to, to take uh, in in the future. Uh, I don't mind having uh, one day fully like battle royale type of game with with our uh, you know gun mechanics which are you know pretty good and and uh, I think people we'll are in love give... with the mechanics. I think that's what everybody wants yeah. that they because they play the other games and they think, oh man, if PUBG just fucking acted like this game, you know, and I, and it's great that you guys are here designing a game and you're. You're, you're you're having a survival game, but you're also manipulating the game so that server owners can go do it and go mm. and keep a, another kind of player base still involved with the game that may not be may not be here down the road, but they're still keeping people yes. in the game and keeping it active. You know what I mean? And the fact that you guys entertain that, I mean, you could have easily said, "No, go fuck yourself." We're in battle royale, you know? You know yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. But you know, uh, and, and, and how we see how the, how we see the whole thing is that until we make the game fully moldable, at least it's, it is our responsibility to to make things possible for you to to go uh, through by changing settings. Uh, and we're trying to put them as much as possible. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna tell you, this, I I love fucking the puppets. To me, that's. People are like, we want AI. I'm like, well, you have two types of AI. You have AI in the game all over. You've got puppets. You've got mechs. You've got animals. You've got birds. And mm. all, that's, you're, all that's part of your game, you know. And I feel that if the loot is too, especially since point four came down, we've been, I've been tweaking the loot. And vanilla or a little bit lower to me seems to be the way to go. Because yeah, the, when, yeah, yeah, I agree if, you with ha- that. if you have everything, then there's no need to go on that, you know, create that mission for yeah. yourself. I'm going to go hit that really lucrative bunker. But man, there's so many fucking puppets there. I don't know if I'm gonna live. I'm gonna have to yeah. bring bullets. You know, I don't want to waste my AK ammo. Maybe I'm gonna bring bow and arrow, or I got. I'm gonna have to make some shotgun. You know, it's keeping you constantly occupied. And when you have everything at your your uh, yeah, you lose interest basically. Right? Yeah. If so, you have everything there, you're like, eh, whatever. You know, who are they gonna wipe? You know, that kind of shit. Yeah, you know? I, I'm I'm I, I'm playing the game constantly. I uh, in the last couple of weeks, I had a break for a couple of months. Uh, during during the summer, 
right. after uh, 0, 0.4. And uh, uh, when people tell me, uh, you know, about them taking the break from the game, it's or, or streamers or whatever, it's normal. You know, it's it's really normal, uh, especially for people that have like a couple of thousands of hours, you know, in the game. Uh, uh, it, it's it's quite normal thing. And I started to play the game again uh, two weeks ago or three, three weeks ago. And uh, it usually goes like this. I'm I'm at work, you know, from, let's say, eight up to, let's say, five or six. Right. Uh, then, I, then I go home, uh, eat something, kiss my wife, kiss my kid, and then uh, take my kid and we play scum uh, up up until probably you know uh, one a.m. each each morning, maybe maybe even later, which makes my wife really you know like crazy angry because <laughs> kid has to go to school. Right. Yeah, uh, my kid has around six six hundred hours. He's nice. ten years old, uh, uh, and I paid him. Uh, about around 30 US dollars for testing the game. <laughs> But, <laughs> so, you know, uh, it, it, he loves that. He loves it. He enjoys it uh, a lot. And, uh, you know, it's kind of kind of good to have, like, uh, you know, free labor. <laughs> at least free. He, <laughs> gets, a, lo he gets a lot, a lot of other things. Yeah, you know, that, but... that's what my dad always said. The reason I had children is for the free labor, you know? So, I mean, absolutely. That, yeah. Absolutely. He, he, when you're uh, done doing dishes, go fucking go find the bugs and scum now. <laughs> no. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, uh, when I usually report bugs in 1 a.m., uh, my team thinks I'm crazy. Right. And, you know, so, some of them see, see that as a good thing. Some of them sees that, see that as, uh, you know, like uh, maybe too obsessive or something. You know, like this guy is, uh, you know, like reporting stuff at, uh, you know, half past one in the morning or something like that. But you can't, you're uh, boss. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is that when I see something that is not working, if I if I don't report immediately, I'll forget about right, it. Right, right. The first thing. Yeah, and it's and like the, anything else. It's a train of thought, and you're trying to keep going. You you know, unless you, you don't want to keep a notepad down because you're playing the game. You know, and maybe you're with your yeah. kids. You know. Yeah, and and you know the thing is also that uh, I'm constantly aware of, of of stuff that is annoying uh, uh, to me and to other players, and personally. Let's let, let's talk about bunkers and entering, entering bunkers. Uh, for me, that's great experience once you're inside. Uh, 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 if you're outside, I don't like I don't like getting killed instantly, you know, by sentries. This is this is for me. That's that's okay. I I, I appreciate the, the let's say the approach and tactics. And now when you have like a go from the bush to to, to other bush and right, you know right. try to run run. That's Fine, that's great, but still, so it, it sometimes it happens that you know they just turn around and kill you with, with the first shot, and this is something that shouldn't be happening in the games. You will, you would, you would have to be, you know, like uh, not depending on on the luck, but on the skill. And this right. is something that I would definitely love to change uh, regarding how sentries behave. Even for me, it's even better that uh, uh, they sort of capture me and I lose everything. That I found, and I have to start again. But please do not kill me, so I have to respawn somewhere, you know, God knows where. It's for me. It's like you know, time to go to sleep. Really, right? right. Uh, yeah, and, and I think it, it, I see that a lot, where people will get into the game and then they they get smoked, and they're like, "Fuck this! I just they did all that, and I'm not starting over now. I'm just going to." Bed, yeah, it's not. It, yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, right, I, right. I, I I totally understand that, and. Uh, we will have to deal with that sooner or later, uh, because the the uh, you know it's it's like you know like cutting the branch where you're sitting or something like that. Because uh, and that, that's the, basically that's the same experience that I had. Like, have you ever played uh, uh, you know like board games like Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and uh, and uh, you know I dabbled like it when I was younger. I mean, I get the concept, but I never really was really into that. Yeah, so so basically, there are like different kind of board game that you can play. Right. Uh, some of them are, uh, and the most popular are like uh, you know this RPG, like uh, Dungeons and Dragons type of game, like heroes and stuff. Right. Uh, and in this kind of games, uh, uh, it's really hard to to die. 
uh, it's always uh, like you have like multiple chances to to do stuff before you die. And then you have like games like you know Cyberpunk uh, 2020, which is currently 2077, uh, done by uh, licensed by uh, CD Projekt Red. Right. Uh, so in I played Cyberpunk as a board game when I was when I was young and. Basically, what happens? You spend a lot of time, you know, creating your character, adding stuff, uh, everything, and you go on the mission, and you know, people start shooting bullets, which happens in real life, and sometimes you get shot in the hand and you die. Right. And nobody likes that. No. Uh, <laughs> not we, after, we, we, not we, after they grind. You know what I mean? It's almost like no, uh, no. Uh, as always, no, you got to find it, that happy medium between grinding and and losing and, and not losing the fucking the yeah. Uh, uh, but the but there, there is there is a quite big difference between losing from other player right and losing exactly. from AI. You know, a, AI NPCs shouldn't be able to kill you instantly. Other players, that's fine because you know. It's rewarding for other player because you never know what other player had to do to get to the position where he would be able to dominate you in that way. So that's fine. But if NPC kills you like that, that's garbage, literally. So, so I'm I'm aware that this part of the game is pure shit, you know. And and uh, I'm looking so forward to changing AI and how things work that I cannot describe you. See, I always thought, too, it's like oh, whenever you guys said that you were doing something with the AI, you're like, yeah, we fucked with the mechs. And we, I'd come back and it was like, Jesus Christ, they're even more deadlier than they were before. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like is he fucking trolling us or what? Like, what's going on? He's like, oh, we, tu- we tuned down mechs. And I, I'd go running like, let's check this new mech shit out. And I run, bam, 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 bam. And I've got the mechs at like 30% of what they are supposed to be. I got them yeah. the damage tuned down because, yeah, the yeah. one shot shit, what I was like, and, and everyone would be like, I don't know, man. Are they trolling us? Because it seems like they're fucking harder than they were before. You know, like yeah. you see you through, like yeah, no, you, you just peek through a window and it, blah, 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 you know, you know, yeah, you know I want to see know, your exoskeleton. You're like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what happens here? So, so uh, mechs are tested in different environment than the real environment. So when programmer who's doing, uh, you know, like tests with, 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 with sentries, uh, is testing on his, you know, local PC and everything. But mechs be- behave differently uh, depending on, uh, Player you know, load, their right? con- Yeah, yeah. Like if there's a lot yeah. of players on the server, they're going to act a little bit more sluggish than if there's only yes. two people on the yes. server. Because exactly. I've noticed that for sure. Yeah, exactly. So so this is how it works. They're controlled by, 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 by server, not by client. Right. Uh, obviously, that, these kind of things can, cannot be controlled on clients. Uh, they... they it's not. It's not possible. Right. So, so the, the the thing is that uh, uh, you know this kind of experience is quite different uh, uh, each time, depending on the amount of player, the uh, amount of vehicles, the amount of everything that happens on the server. Right. And if you if you let's say join the server that has like a couple of players, it's more likely that you will get killed instantly. <laughs> you know, yeah, and, and, and that's and that sucks. Yeah, I've noticed so, that. Now, are zombies or the puppets uh, client side or are they server side? They are also server side. They're also server oh. side, but they're like they're uh, they're uh, they're the only AI which uh, which was done a little bit, uh, you know, like uh, more in depth. And uh, uh, I think that they're pretty well pretty well done. They have some issues uh, regarding you know like small teleportation stuff, which has more to do with Unreal Engine than uh, you know and how it handles stuff than you know the game itself. Uh, but uh, from their perspective, we're still missing uh, uh, puppets going through windows, like jumping through windows, uh, not like, uh, you know, parkour jumping, but maybe, you know, trying to climb over the window, then fall down and follow you or something like that. So right, they, right. They, that it just don't stop uh, in front of the window. Uh, uh, but other than that, uh, I believe that they're, if you compare to other, all other survival games, they're probably the best. You they know, are, like, uh, in my zombie opinion, representation. Yeah. You got I, the, the one great thing I like is when you hear the roar of the zombies, you know that this is actually a zombie has seen another player in that vicinity, and you're using yeah. sound because you're like, oh man, there's you think you're the only guy in town, and then you hear that roar, and it's 
You're like, yes, fuck, someone yes, else is yes. on their way. And and, no, they're, they're, and they're, yeah, there's a lot of other zombie pu- you know, games, but you guys got it. You know, Yeah, there's a little bullshit that happens here and there, like you said, the teleportation, the clipping through walls and stuff. But just the, the way it is now, and you, I mean, I like it, especially when it's nighttime and you're running through the forest, and I've got the multiplayer jacked up a little bit on this server. And mm-hmm. next thing you know, you got... From behind, you just you get one of those crackhead zombies start beating on you. You're like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah, yeah. And it's it's it it it's it, 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 it's not just like, "Oh, hey, look, there's a crew of zombies. Let's go fucking mow them down." They actively yeah. attack you, and I think that's one of the best features of the game. And that's what I never understood when people are like, "Yeah, we got to turn the zombies off in this server." Like, why? Why would you do yeah. that? Um, I, I I don't understand that either. But uh, there there are a couple of things that you know uh, have to be improved even with them uh, regarding how they act. And and we I would definitely love to see them like uh, you know uh, eating dead players, eating animals, you know, because that's the whole purpose of their like uh, uh, story wise and everything. Basically, they they're BCU. Uh, right. takes over the control and they have to feed on 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 uh you know whatever they find and if they don't feed on anything then they're like slow and if they like uh are fully fat then they're like really really fast like full of energy so this is something that uh, i would i would like to see in the game but also i would like to see a game uh in the game like a lot of uh like genetically modified monsters like Mr. Brenner that we have introduced. Yeah, I saw that. Will, that uh, I'm sure people. That I'm, will, I'm waiting for that, that will one. Freak, freak out. That will freak out people. You know, right. totally. So uh, uh, and uh, NPCs are really, really important, and they will come in the next step. Uh, uh, you know, uh, of development uh, probably. Uh, uh, probably they will be out in 0.6. But there will be uh, we, we have we have like uh, guys that works uh, uh, on AI. Unfortunately, just one one programmer. But basically, uh, uh, he he already started working on the on the new AI. And so the the progress will be uh, seen on mostly on first on on animals and sentries, and then eventually we will start adding these nasty nasty things. Now NPCs. Uh, uh, not only like human, human-like, but also like monster-like, uh, and NPCs will definitely uh, add more, uh, you know, like first uh, better experience of this like world and the stuff that is going on. The, the second thing is that they will uh, uh, reduce the amount of PvP because you will have to deal with other stuff. Right. Uh, it, again, it's a survival game, and you know. Yeah, it's a survival game. Right. And they will make uh, things quite more interesting uh, uh, in the future. And also, uh, we are planning to have like uh, outposts with uh, with like places where you can uh, get some sort of mission quest or even sell some some uh, let's say metal scrap or exchange it for something else that it's really hard to find. So that uh, some some at a certain point there will be uh, some sort of economy. Uh, you know, uh, uh, added to the game. Yeah, uh, and I, I think too, players because... players can create their own economy. You know, I mean, there's cer- certain things yes. in the game that are really rare, like your gun cleaning kits. Those things are worth fucking gold because you can have 38 fucking AKs in your box, but you know, 60 yes. percent of them are below 40 <laughs> percent, and you're gonna get jammed. And I'll yeah. tell you that gun jamming mechanic has completely fucking <laughs> changed the game for me. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten fucked by that and died by zombies. Uh, or, yeah, it, 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 you know. it has to be, it has to be, you know, nerfed a little bit. It has to be, it, it's, it, it's too I much. Think, I think it's great. I mean, I, I, I mean, I like the, the your guys' vision and where you're going with the game, and the fact that you're only forty percent done with you know until one point oh, yes. amazing. And I always tell that to people. I said, you know, because everyone's talking about Daisy. We may, you know, there's people who. Daisy, oh Daisy. Well, fucking Daisy is an old ass game on an old ass engine that's fucking eight years old or whatever. And when you, where you guys are in two years, and where they were in two years, because I, I got suckered into buying that sixty dollar mm. fucking game. And <laughs> after two years, you guys are light years ahead of them. And I'm convinced that when you guys are done, you're gonna be, you're gonna be the, you're gonna, you're gonna set the fucking 
example for the whole genre. Yeah, we will we will set the standards. That's that's our that's our plan. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, each, no, everyone's gonna have to come up to your level to fucking make the next survival game because yeah, in my yeah, mind is like you know. That's the whole point, that, and that's that's the one of one of my principles in, in 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 not just like the things that I do for for a living, but also in my life. If if you try to do something, you know, try to be the best. You know, that's uh, it's not easy, uh, but you know, who is actually happy with being mediocre or something like that? <laughs> yeah, you know? right. Yeah, I'm 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 it's perfectly not, not fine point. with my average size penis. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> well, well, you know, some, on some things you cannot influence, so you have to be happy. About it. But you know, on on the things that you can influence, well, you know, uh, if you don't, then basically you're nobody. You know, no, you, you have to. And you have to do stuff. I always, as streaming the game like i never really intended to be a streamer i fucking rented this server two years ago actually like in like a week or two i've had this server for two years and i i i offered it to another streamer and said hey use the server to promote your stream and we can maybe get some mm -hmm. people in here and because you know i would play other places and i just wasn't happy with the way they were running it and you know you fucking kill a guy and next you know he spawns next to you and he he's kitted out and all the perfect gear and you're like okay i know what i happened what's going on over there and mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to. And the next thing you know, he didn't want to do it. So I'm like, I'll just fucking try this. Because, I mean, if he would have told me, you know, two years ago, I would be sitting here streaming on Twitch. I would have told you, you're, you're fucking you're on drugs, you know. Mm -hmm. But now now that I'm doing it, it's, it's I, I look, look what I've done. I meet all these people on a daily basis. I get to talk to people from all over the world. I get to meet people like you that are, you know obviously consuming a lot of my fucking time i've got a lot of time in this game so as everyone a lot of the people in the community do you have a lot of diehard community people that just love this fucking game and i don't understand how you know maybe some it's how other people especially other streamers that might be a little bit more influential can kind of poo poo the game seeing that they really don't know either know the progress about it and or don't follow it they just kind of look at it and say who whatever you know i mean i think you know what i'm talking about there's yeah th those are the guys that can come in and and and, and while you don't want to be like uh you know suck up to them because hey you it's your it's your it's your game whatever but at the same token if they do come in here and they enjoy the game that brings you a lot more people that may you know exposure and then at the same time if they fucking say something negative about it it's it it doesn't necessarily do you any work any you know it doesn't fuck you over yeah. with your current client base but it doesn't really do you any good with trying to get new people especially someone that might be a little bit more influential obviously than me or any of the other you know diehard uh streamers out there that play scum and i know i know i know and i'm speaking on the american side there are fucking tons of streamers that you got German streamers and all that that have the huge. I know the game is really big in Europe, but I, it seems to be like we need more players in the U.S. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It just mm -hmm. seems. Do you, do you notice that that the the, the the difference between European and the yes, yes, U.S. economies? Yes. How like you, your uh, how much more popular you are by you know you know by you guys mainly yeah, you're but, European but, company. So I get that, but still I don't understand how people over here in the United States just haven't yeah, fucking jumped all over this. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's it's. Uh, I wouldn't blame anybody. It's it, if if you want to blame somebody, then it's us. So we didn't do much regarding marketing and everything. Uh, 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 we are monitoring, uh, you know, the the uh, the the you know, like uh, when you with each month we get report from Steam, and then we can see how many uh, uh, copies were sold in 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 certain parts of the world and. Uh, we know that I, I believe that right now uh, uh, I'm not sure if states are in the first place or the second, but you know uh, either China was on the first place uh, or, oh, yeah. or they, states. They just they just have the sheer numbers. I mean, fuck, they buy. Yeah, yeah but the thing <laughs> is that what uh, yeah what we get from uh, you know other partners is that usually uh, not usually all of them have states much bigger percentage than what we have. So yeah, yes, you're right. Uh, uh, from from other thing is that uh, we have like 
huge community in Ar- Ar- Argentina and huge yeah. community in Brazil, which yes. is really strange. But I said hello if anybody is listening to you from there. Hello, guys. Thank you for supporting the game. But, you know, this kind of thing is really interesting. And this is something that we will have to deal in the future when the game gets closer to, you know, 1.0 version. And uh, I'm, I'm personally, I'm looking forward to first free weekend that we will have. And then, then that, you will see a lot yeah, of, a lot of people yeah. coming from States. Well, you know, you know and you, the free weekends. Yeah. If you guys do a free weekend, that's, whew, that's going to be, we had, we had the opportunity before. Uh, I'm not I mean, sure you guys uh, heavily discount the game the way it is. I mean, it's, it's a bargain at 30 bucks. Yeah. You go to a sale at $15, you know, you're p- people paying fifteen dollars for games that were made seventeen fucking years ago, you know. <laughs> so, uh, I, I yeah. So 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 yeah. So so thing is that uh, the, the 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 price and everything will rise eventually as the game yeah. gets uh, released. But we want to award people that are you know with us from the beginning. And and yeah. the thing is that uh, I think when you when you see titles that and uh, and how much uh, money they ask for you know for amount of gameplay they offer today. I'm not talking about AAA, but you know different kind of titles. I think that the the the, the it's important to have like really fair uh, price uh, uh, that people you know don't 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 get feeling that they're getting ripped off or something. And still, you know, the game is in uh, early early access in development, so so it has bugs, it has issues, and we we cannot just like that, you know, be, you know, like cocky and just raise the price or something like that. We know, we know the state of the game and everything. I think the current price is fair. I think, I think it's the best bang for the buck. I mean, I know people that probably would easily lay down 60 bucks. I laid down 60 bucks for DayZ when it first came out and it was hot fucking garbage for the first, you know, I didn't even get to play the mm-hmm. game because, you know, the servers were all fucked. Yeah. They still have all the bullshit bugs that they've always had. And, and I think in my mind right now, that's the fucking comp it's, it's competition. Cause I, I think Daisy was alone, but I didn't, you know, I mean, don't you find it completely fucking amazing that when you guys released this game and you were fucking huge, successful, a million copies in three weeks. And all of a sudden Daisy comes out of woods and goes, we're going 1.0. Here we are. Yeah, the thing, the I mean, thing is that, you, you didn't find is, that, that they were riding your coattails. Like, no. fuck, man, look at how much interest is in this game. Maybe we should get no. this fucking piece of shit going. You know? Well, the thing is that uh, uh, I'm not sure if I have talk, talked about that earlier, but uh, well, obviously, and I'm not, you know, running from that. Uh, Scum was partially inspired by Daisy, and Daisy is some some sort of, you know, the legend. But also, Daisy wasn't built been you know, created by Bohemia, but but uh, it was no, created it was by created community. by a yeah, community. That, that was a community mod, and I never understood when that game came out. There was more available in the mod than there was in the standalone. So I'm like, why should I spend the money when I can go back to the fucking mod that has yeah. more good stuff? Yeah, so, you, know? <laughs> it's, so, you know, yeah, absolutely. So so uh, uh, obviously, you know, uh, I, I'm not running from that, and uh, also I, I can tell you that. Partially, the game was inspired by many other games like World of Tanks. By... Yeah, and I, I noticed, and the World of Tanks thing is the, uh, you know, the no third person peeking, which I can't even tell you how many people don't even fucking know about that. Yeah, so so ma- many things have we have you know uh, tried to use from other games and board games and everything. So uh, this is something that which is normal for many games, uh, uh, and I think that for example, Dead Matter developers also told that they have. Uh, been inspired by a lot of games, including Scum, which is kind of right. Kind of and, cool. and, and that's how everything, you know. I mean, every it, it's very seldom you come up with this fucking idea that's so revolutionary that nobody else is. Everybody borrows yeah. from everybody else. That's just how the world works. You I mean, in, yeah, in it everything. works. But, but yeah, but we also implemented a lot of our our own stuff, or we at least try to do stuff that we found interesting in other games. And you know, try to play around and put it in our game. Right. So you know, eventually it is sort of unique product. Now regarding Daisy, uh, 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 back then when we got uh, first release, uh, public release at at, at PAX, uh, it was two and a half years ago uh, in Boston. I met guys from Daisy uh, who were working. Uh, 
what was supposed to be 1.0 version and i i cannot describe how scared they were oh at that point. I, I bet because uh yeah i mean yeah and and uh daisy at that point was dying really they 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 were like having a thousand or something uh, ccu you know each day uh but when you take in consideration the amount of copies sold uh it it was it was the game that was uh you know literally you know vanishing and everything so so uh, what what actually happened is that uh, uh i think the scum rebooted the whole genre I, I, and, and I, uh, you know, see, I was going to say that I, I do think you guys kickstarted and lit a fire under everyone's ass and said, yeah, hey, so, yeah, bring so, it back. So, so, yeah, so, so basically, you know, after, after we, we released the game, which was far away from perfect, uh, a lot of people got back that like survival feeling and everything. And they tried again, Daisy, which, uh, you know, fortunately because of the technology, which uh, advanced during the seven years was playable finally. You know enjoyable so right they're actually had you know really really you know good profits from scum uh you know and not, not i'm not saying implying anything you know they earned whatever they created so i'm not getting into it but the thing is that you know scum actually played a really good role uh in in uh daisy and how it sells right now and but the thing is that uh I'm not sure if they if they will ever continue or or decide to build the game. I, I know that they have Arma, which is their main title and you know their main baby, and Daisy was giving them a lot of money, uh, and you know, it was yeah. selling selling by itself without any issues. Right, it was so, a cash cow. They were like, "Well, look, these guys will buy the fucking game the way it is. Why should we change it?" You know. Yeah. So you're still, you're still filtering out sixty bucks for a fucking game. I'm not going to bust my, I mean, if they're doing it, Hey, I mean, I mean, if you think about it in the business sense, it's, it's the way you want to, you know, for a big yeah. business, they're like, wow, we're, we're getting money and we're not doing anything. It's amazing. You know? Yeah. So for them it's good. Uh, right now, Daisy is really doing probably the best time in their life and, and the amount of players, everything. We will see how that will go in the future. Uh, uh, we definitely plan to, to remove them from that throne. So, yeah, and I'm I'm waiting for it, that. It, yeah, it's just a matter of time. And, uh, unless, of course, they did they decide to make Daisy two, which will probably take them a lot of time. And if I were them, I would probably start thinking about Daisy two because you know it's it's logical stuff uh, if they do it properly. So yeah, and I think you know, you know I, and everyone's I, what, the, what keeps that game alive too. I think is the the modding community. You know, standalone. Yes. You don't see you don't see yes. people going on. People buy Daisy on console and they're like, "What the fuck did I buy this for?" You know, but you know, in the PC yes. world with the modding, that's what what ninety nine percent of your players are are playing in. You know, it's not. You might have some of the vanilla guys, but you know, your higher end streamers might be playing. A, you know, they're playing those modded servers. You know, and yes. yeah. and it still comes with the same pain points. But you, I definitely, I just thought it was crazy because I followed you guys. And then the release, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, Daisy 1.0. I'm like, wow, you know, here, this is this is just a, a culmination of a perfect storm where they're riding the wave of yeah, it, it, your guys' it success. And 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 it, and it was kind of like it wasn't like it was planned, but they're like, this is an opportunity we have to jump at because here we go, we got fucking, we got, uh, you know, these obviously people want a survival game, so we should maybe pay a little bit more attention to it. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the... <laughs> It, it's okay you know it's it's understandable from their perspective right uh I, I i'm not going to you know to analyze their business model or or, or anything they uh i i know some stories you know uh, i i'm not it's not it's not any of my business to tell them right now but uh i'm glad that they're doing well you know well, yeah i mean uh, if they do they they're they're holding a certain market of the players that more than likely are going to come to scum Absolutely. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say that. I didn't oh, I want know. to say that. <laughs> no, you keep it. They're just they're just keeping those guys busy until you guys are ready to say, hey, hey, yeah. if you pull the fucking cape off of the scum and you're like, look what we have here, baby. And they're like, ooh, yeah, that, 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 you know? That's that's the plan. That's the plan. Let's so, hope that they, they don't they didn't they didn't hear it. So <laughs> I, all right, so I've been meaning to ask you, what kind of rig do you run when you're playing scum? 
because everyone's you know there's all kinds of i when mm. when scum came out and i had my pc and I, I started streaming i'm like you know what fuck this i'm gonna go out and build the best fucking computer and i told my wife it was only gonna cost like 60 bucks She's like, oh, okay, you know, yeah. and here I got all these boxes showing up in the mail. What kind of what kind of PC are you running when you play? Oh, uh, at, at home, uh, it's a, it's a really potato potato PC. You run a potato, you the, the toaster toaster kind. Yeah, it's uh, I I'm not even sure how uh, how old is my CPU. Uh, it's 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 at least it was like high mid range. Um, like eight years. Ago. Uh huh. It was never like you know top. I have like sixteen gig, uh, gigs of RAM, which is kind of okay. I I am playing on Windows se uh, Seven uh, because oh. I'm an old guy. I don't want. I don't like ten and updates and everything. I will try to keep it alive as long as possible. And and I'm sort of uh, uh, as uh, used as a, you know, like guinea pig for testing the game. Uh, right, for the, for, the old, for the older <laughs> older machines, for your, your, you know, the people who play the game. Yeah, so, I, so, so that... I, ha I have Intel Xeon, uh, I don't know which that, that model is, W3520 uh, with 2.76 gigahertz. Uh, it's, Pretty low, and have, I have 1060 uh, uh, Nvidia uh, uh, graphic card at, at my home. At, at work, I have 1080, which is which was good card, you know, year ago. But right, right now it's not that good. And uh, right now, right now, this scene I have uh, 50 FPS on low, uh, which is good for me but if i go to city then because of streaming and everything uh it's not enjoyable to play yeah uh, i i i have been i've been in city a couple of days ago with my my buddies and it was terrible so so i mean did you feel i've noticed that it the game seems to be more cpu intensive and RAM intensive uh, yeah, than, uh, than, than the graphics card. Like if I when I bought I yeah. bought I bought the i9 the ninety nine hundred K and my fucking mm -hmm. my performance was just I have no issues even with hordes of zombies I don't I dropped maybe mm -hmm. at at fourteen forty p I dropped to maybe like fucking fifty or sixty in the city yeah but yeah for someone who's running a, a you know eight to sixteen gigs of RAM or a, a older CPU I've noticed that they those people tend to kind of yeah, have, and, and, issues, and, yeah. And, yeah. Now, is that is that how you guys do? You guys, does are you now? I, I know you, you push the limits of everything, so you want to you want to try to see how fucking good the game runs as is before you go and optimize everything. Is that how is that how you guys do this? I mean, is that yeah, it's it's always like that. It's it's uh, it's kind of uh, you know, customary for game developers to have. Uh, especially testers or people who are testing the game uh, uh, or more often like usually artists or you know content guys because programmers always have something something better to do is to have like different type of uh, PCs uh, uh, but in most cases uh, these PCs are not like the top PCs on the market right, right. because obviously we want to know uh, how the game runs on low, lower specs and, uh, and 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 uh, the thing is that I think that my my PC currently is uh, below, far below recommended, uh, you know, specifications. Uh, I I still managed to play it well. Uh, I bought a PC to my son, which is uh, 1080. I, I'm not sure about CPU. It was a really good deal, but it cost me around. Uh, uh maybe 800 us dollars with 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 monitor uh which is not a lot which is pretty affordable you know for machine and he doesn't have any issues to play the game right uh, on, on epic uh so so i'm talking at, at, that he has at least 30 fps uh all the time or or you know or somewhere between 30 or 50 FPS, which is which is which is fine. The the biggest issues that we have are streaming issues. So this is the uh, you know the worst stuff that actually can happen. Uh, uh, it's always good to have 
uh, you know, graphic card with a lot of RAM. Uh, right. And it's good to have like a lot of RAM, uh, you know, like PC with a lot of RAM also. Uh, and CPU that it can, so that it, it can handle everything. But uh, uh, issue with streaming is also related with uh, people installing the, the game on hard drive instead of SSD. Yeah, uh, I know. Which... I've, <laughs> I've noticed that people said they have the game on a hard drive. I'm like, no, 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 don't do, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, because there are so many things that, that might, uh, you know, usually we get like things. Well, you know, I have installed Doom Eternal on, on my hard drive and, and it works perfectly. And, you know, Scum doesn't, it's not even AAA and it doesn't work. But, you know, dude, it's completely fucking different game. Right, you know, They exactly. have limi limited, limited uh, you know, levels, arenas, everything. They might have streaming, but it's like... Uh, you 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 don't have opportunity to go in vehicles and travel like seven kilometers, you know, from the position where you are, or ten, right. or you know, whatever, you know, no, and you you don't have like three different type of environments that it's always so people don't understand that, and that's a huge, huge issue. Uh, you you simply one simply cannot just compare, you know, uh, games that are completely different different genre, even although they are like. FPS like shooting games like first person shooters or, or whatever uh, uh, the way how games are optimized and how they work are you know dependent on the on the type of the project up to the game and uh, they're completely different and and you don't see Do uh, Doom Eternal or or I don't know Sekiro you know or or uh, uh, God of War having 64 players do no. you <laughs> no 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 so, no so you don't have like uh, thousands of of entities uh, that you can store or uh, you know build the fucking base in or or or, or you know you simply you know making comparison is really uh, arrogant uh, arrogant in this kind of uh, situation in, and and it doesn't make any sense right you no know, it, people should should think more and and it is your your game is by far, I think when people play it, they just start taking it for granted. But it's like, okay, go go get another game where you can just go wherever the fuck you want and build a giant fucking palace made out of logs and you know cabins and mm -hmm. collect fucking thousands of guns. I mean, the the game, you know, I'm I, I, in this server alone. I'm there's hundreds of thousands of fucking entities probably in there. And I know you guys yeah. streamlined it where it's kind of virtualized, where it's not there until yes. you look at it. And that yes. so, I remember before that, when the server started getting full, you were like, "It's getting close. We're gonna have to fucking we're gonna have to wipe because uh, you know shit just started disappearing." Mainly, mainly because yes. you didn't you, before the virtualization, and when that happened, I think that was like set the game ahead like light years. You know, everyone, for, especially those who had been playing, really appreciated that. Yes, this is something that uh, you know we, we were hoping uh, that uh, we were hoping for that uh, Unreal Engine has uh, by itself, but unfortunately we had to do it. Uh, and I think that's by, the, by itself. So yeah, and that's the amazing thing is that you're using the Unreal Engine, but it's not like you just take it out and then you throw your scum goodies on. You're you're physically changing it to make it work for your. So it's Unreal Engine with the the scum fucking attitude with it you know what i mean it's not yeah so, just... so 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 this is this is where you know you you actually can see uh and i'm not bragging but i'm being professional so this is where you actually can see uh uh what true developers can do and what people who start modding or you know enter the, the world of games and playing with it and you know thinking in a way okay so maybe if scum has it we can have it too well, we didn't get it for, for free. We didn't get get it. Most of the things we didn't get from from uh, Epic or Unreal Engine. We had to do it by ourselves. So, uh, if you're a developer, if you're trying to make next the best survival game in the world, think twice. How you know? How do you think that will be possible? Because you know, just licensing the engine won't won't help you probably at all to to achieve your vision or whatever you want. Uh, you will have to do a lot of lo low level stuff to make things work. And, you know, uh, when I see new games coming out, uh, when I saw uh, both Dead Side, Dead Matter, and everything, and we were following them, 
I knew exactly the position they are in and what is going to go, you know, for future for right. them. And now, you know, uh, everybody can go to their sites or whatever and see how many updates they can have. I heard, uh, you know, from their developers that, you know, uh, they started with excuses. We're a small team. We can, we cannot handle, well, you know, we were also a small team. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, so that, for me, there is no excuses like that. You shouldn't get, uh, excuse it to, to, to community you should start working and shut up and and you know deliver stuff uh, however you know because basically when you put the product on the market and somebody buys that he, he didn't buy you know this kind of early access game he actually bought your vision and the end of the project and you should stick to your word so this right. is, this is something that, 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 that they should do and yeah, I mean, like, again, there's always the armchair developers. I mean, you've dealt with that recently. Yes. You've had someone come in and it was like, you're like, yeah, oh, you know, it, you know, I, it, it aggravates me when I see that kind of stuff. And, you know, for instance, you know, there's. Uh... Hello? Oh, no. It's, oh. you know. You do... Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for instance, what's up, Shroud? Yeah, did you know that that whole thing was 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 that 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 really set me? Uh, I didn't really care for that when he was like saying, "Well, uh, you know, you guys took all the money." I'm like, "What are you fucking talking about?" To me, that yeah, that was insulting, really. Right. When, uh, you know, uh, uh, but but you know what's the best part? He's saying. That he would make the uh, and, and that's partially true. It would it would be great to have like really from the uh, development pers uh, developer perspective, great streamer that you can uh, you know build your whole marketing for the game by you know him playing the game. That's fantastic because you don't have to deal with a publishing shit and you know and everything with publishers stuff like that. So that's great. But he shouldn't be talking about development. He maybe knows about games. He's a really good player and everything. But uh, giving, uh, you know, ac uh, so easy, you know, on ac accusations that we actually, uh, you know, cheated our, you know, supporters, players, whatever, that we didn't do anything. We took money and run. It's it's really low. No, yeah. This, it, something, it was, yeah, it this was, is something that wasn't right. It was bullshit. And it, and it was th then, th then I laughed at this. My goal, my dream is to make a game. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There, there was, there was that, and then the, another thing that pissed me off was, uh, you know, uh, it. This, this one was the one that. I just think it's they don't they don't know what to do. You know, is when they said when he said that I was like, yeah, you obviously don't you're not making correct statements, and to yeah. me. Uh -huh. To me, and and that's what I meant by the 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 influences of of yeah. people like that, but making a statement when when you really pay attention, you guys are fucking dedicated and busting your fucking ass. And yeah, I always I tell people that you are the poster child of what indie game development should be, and that if no, nobody does it just like you or better, then they're going to fail. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. We are we are we are, we are really trying really hard to you know to push the standards and everything and 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 you know to to make people respect our work and everything. So from from his perspective, uh, uh, you know about that uh, we are not we don't know what we are doing. This might sound true uh, if uh, if it's not taken uh, if everything is not taken in consideration. So uh, uh, usually, what, what's the what's the main issue is uh, uh, the amount of stuff that had had to be you know given to community, the amount of uh, content upgrades, upgrades of the game, and everything, so that the game that, that the community feels that the game is uh, moving, play, going places, that is growing, and everything. So uh, uh, this doesn't mean that uh, any developers that are building the game. Uh, don't know what they would like to achieve with the game. That sometimes means that developers literally don't have enough resources to put so many updates and changes so that right. actually the game grows fast. Right. Uh, uh, currently, you have 
uh, you're living in the world where you know uh, 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 you have battlefield uh, br that gets released full of bugs you have uh, many AAA titles released literally in 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 some sort of alpha uh, uh, maybe even pre-alpha state uh, which is fully broken uh, uh, you you have you have situation where uh, um, small games uh, uh, like like for example the last example was Fall Guys which are uh, um, which made really huge success are uh, selling more than AAA titles and and you have these big companies uh, full of managers uh, they are trying to reach uh, you know certain profit and everything confused because market has changed so much that they cannot predict you know what is good and what is not good so right. uh, uh, from from shout perspective yeah i can see from his perspective that uh, he would probably love the, the game uh, uh, you know scum uh, uh, or whichever game he's monitoring uh, uh, gets much more stuff and uh, and bigger progress and he's seeing like two million copies sold and that equals that amount of money right. and yeah and, but but you know i already said that we didn't get all that money that uh, well, yeah and uh, the fact uh, is is he just thinks that you dump that fucking money into the game you have to you have to hire people you, you gotta fucking get yeah, an office it's, it's, building it's, you got i mean there's so much more behind so, it yeah we uh, we, we have uh when we uh when the game sold, uh, and, uh, and we had uh, we, we moved to the new office, a new office location, uh, we did it. We moved all the company, everything, set up computers, and start working in like three days. So nobody is, did notice anything. Which you know, is amazing so, so, that you fucking you know. I mean, it's just like yeah. you're, you're you're working, and then behind the scenes, you're doing shit. You're moving. Then you guys had a fucking earthquake. Now you got a goddamn pandemic bullshit going on. I mean, it's like anything that you could possibly have thrown at you has probably happened. And you guys are still releasing content. And you're yeah, in, in yeah. The interesting, yeah, the interesting thing is that we, when we talk to you know our let's say uh, business partners and everything from big companies, and uh, uh, usually I send them uh, examples of our work just to brag. Uh, the last one was this night vision that we improved. Which was which which was literally awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, and there was yeah, a and, huge and, improvement, huge. Yeah, a lot, and and it's really really you know looking well, and uh, and all these you know business partners are from AAA com companies, and they they're so they're, they're somewhat ashamed. Well, you know uh, we can we are not in position to you know to make AAA title or something like that, but we can. Hello, I can see you there sneaking. <laughs> He's leaving. Remember guys, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember guys, he can he can fucking ban you. He he, he has he has the power on any server. Yeah. <laughs> I you you look like a hacker. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep my eyes on you, okay? Yeah. No, I mean so, the so thing it, is that yeah, you guys have done so much with bullshit adversity that was not intended. And you're still going, and you're still chugging away. And I, I take it personally since I've been with the game since fucking, what was it, August 28th or whatever, 29th when it released. Since that, since day one, and seeing how you guys have grown, when someone like that, like Shroud says something like that, I'm like, you, dude, you have no fucking idea. And whatever, you know, he's, he's that's what does what he does. And, I'm going to tell you, he's going to end up fucking coming back to scum and, you know. Yeah, he will. But the yeah. thing is that from, you know, from his, we, we are not uh, literally aware of uh, his way of living, what he's going through. And uh, uh, we are like small, you know, like ants to, to you know, to his universe and everything. Uh, uh, and he gets more money uh, on probably on yearly basis uh, than, uh we actually have uh, got, get, got, got from Scum. And he has, I believe, if he really wants to make a game, he has all the, you know, like, uh, he has everything. Uh, basically, finances, uh, it's, it's uh, fine. I, I can guarantee that he doesn't need 10 million US dollars to make survival game. I believe that, let's say, two or three millions are more than enough to make really good game. So, 
Right, and, uh, and that, that's another thing. Making a game, you can you can th- you throw money at anything, you can do it. But to make a good game, cost effectively by watching the way an indie team would, watching your pennies and your dimes to make sure because you you don't have the resources that the fucking big studios have. And yeah, to do that is is yet another challenge. You know, okay, you can always be like the the Bohemians or whatever, just fucking throw fucking money at it or whatever until you know until it works. Where you don't really have that fucking option. And, and I don't know. I, I like yeah, I said, I of take course. It. Yeah, yeah. It's it's different. So, uh, it 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 cannot be described in just like you know couple of words you have to you have to feel all the thing and uh uh, you 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 can you can you can for example look at the uh, star citizen project which is uh you know probably the most expensive one in the history of game game industry industry history and uh for me it's not worth that money uh i'm not sure i i've seen the game everything and uh uh, I know how long is it, it's in development, and still, I, I feel that it could be done in, let's say, ten percent of that price easily. So you know, it's 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 really strange to 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 see things happening, and and if you if you're looking from the perspective of player, for from perspective of streamer, you know, from perspective of somebody who's not in game development, then. Uh, people get confused with these kind of things, and not, you know, so so uh, uh, people are just pulling numbers from their asses. Uh, I know that in Croatia, for example, I know a couple of teams teams that are building really huge and uh, you know like ambitious games with uh, budgets which are lower than uh, three thousand US dollars, three hundred thousand US dollars. So so you know the this something like this probably wouldn't be possible in in any, any other country uh but i'm not saying that you know also these uh these things are right because i know that most of these development teams are working really hard in over time and sacrificing everything and try and hoping and trying to be successful right uh but also they have you know like a lot of passion and and dedication to their games more than probably developers that are given uh, ten millions to produce something uh, and they have dedicated tasks and you know like more like corporate structures and basically uh, work for eight hours and then leave and then don't think about the product. Right. Uh, it's it's completely different different world different universe. No. Well, I mean, like I said. I appreciate all of the hard work you guys do because I spend a lot of time in your fucking game and I probably could have got a goddamn PhD if I had done spent my time elsewhere. <laughs> but, you know, I enjoy your game. I've got a shit ton of hours in your game and uh, I clearly still suck at it. But So, uh, so, so you, will, you, you will not refund it? <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm going to know. I will not refund it. I will not refund it. I'm, I'm, always a, I'm always a scum promoter. If someone comes along and... They need scum. Yeah. I'll I'll make sure that they get their hands on one, or they they they're in the game. Thank because... you. Yeah, you know you know what's 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 the 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 thing that I simply cannot understand is when you you go to the, to, to reviews and you see a review of a guy who has spent let's say four thousand yeah. or five thousand hours and, and shits all over your game. Yeah, yeah. You know and, I spent four thousand. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you look another week. You know, and you see that he spent like more, let's say, hundred hours more on the game. So he's like torturing himself with the game. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's really, uh, it's really, you know, strange. And to top so, it off, he has a forty-two page dissertation about why what is wrong with your game. Of the four thousand two hundred forty hours in the game, and then you know, next thing you know, six pages later, he's gone through. How uh, you know, and it's those kind of people I think are just born to complain. You know, there's someone, you know, is gonna fucking someone's always gonna bitch no matter what. You could be you could be the most perfect fucking developers in the world. They're still gonna fucking gonna be someone who's bitching and moaning. But I think that yeah. just comes with the territory. I think that's just what people are some people are fucking 
what they do. I don't know. I'm not like that. I don't. Yeah. Do, I'm not. I love your game, and I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep playing it until, uh, you know. Unless my like unless, a... unless yeah until unless my old lady divorces me and I got to move out then you know I might not play it as much but you know hey uh, I think it's 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 a great game and I appreciate all the hard work you and the your team uh, does yeah you know that we had a couple of divorces in our company also because of hard work <laughs> yeah uh, I wouldn't I I'm wouldn't say joking. what I'm doing is hard but hard work but I'll tell you what I do I do spend but you know what I another thing that I that I, I like about your game is is that it's it brings people together. Like I have friends that I come to, especially during the pandemic where I'm not going out, I'm not spending time with my friends mm -hmm. or my family because my wife's a nurse. She's exposed frequently to people who have it, so we kind of stay yeah. away from people. And it 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 brings me joy to sit down with my friends to come play in the fucking game where you don't you can do whatever you want. You want to just chill out and fucking build a fucking base or go collect fucking metal for, to repair your bases or whatever you do that. And it brings people together and there, and there's communities all throughout the overall community that all get together and enjoy it together, you know? And I think yeah. that's probably one of the best things about the game is the fact that, you know, it's not, you're not just you and your buddy are out there roasting fucking people. And then the game you die or, you know, you go to the gulag or whatever the fuck's going on, you know, it's yeah. It brings people together, and it and, and the and the speed to which you can play, choose to play the game is is awesome. You know, like Les. Les is our octogenarian gamer. He's eighty one years young. Mm -hmm. Hello, Les. You're not gonna fucking. You're not gonna get. Uh, you know, uh, Les is not gonna go play Call of Duty. You know what I mean? But he's he's sure as shit gonna sit in here and and guard the base and and do stuff. You know, and and and, and the team the team works and stuff. And and it's it's a uh, it, it's it's a bigger part of the game that people I don't think really appreciate or even think about. Yeah, but yeah, I know I, I like I like that part also. I yeah, like that part also. So it's 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 something that uh, most of the more arcadeish arcade like players do not you know know about it. But uh, I still hope that eventually uh, because we're all like. People who like to, you know, to hang out with others, and you know, I think that uh, even even like players who play Call of Duty or or Fortnite uh, uh, can enjoy Scum or other survival games uh, out there if they're like shown some things that are possible. Uh, I had many in many occasions. I have friends, uh, uh, you know attracted to the game because I, I spoke about stuff that we were doing that were not related to any kind of gunfight or, you know, uh, anything just hanging around, even just like pissing or shitting on another person. It's just always fun. Dildo spears. Where can you get a dildo fucking spears. game because I got a goddamn dildo spear, you know? Yes, that's Nowhere. <laughs> the main selling point. <laughs> Scum, get your own dildo spear. But then the, yeah. you listen to the community... You know your content's coming out. People are excited. All your all your tweets. Your you know what's kind. Of, you got you got your fishing. Your Mr. Brenner. You got your fucking all, all the good stuff that's coming out in the future is gonna make the game even better. And you know I can't wait for it. So yeah, me also. Me also. I, I cannot. I, I cannot uh, wait for for this game to be finished. Uh, in a way, not not that we will. You know, even when we reach 1.0, uh, uh, there will be still like. I believe that we will still be working on the game uh, in, intensively for at least a couple of years more, uh, adding more community stuff and everything, uh, supporting modding and stuff like that. But what I'm looking for is to uh, uh, to do stuff like uh, DLCs for Scum, which will be, you know, really interesting new roles and everything. But you know, not not just like uh, add. Uh, a new, the same kind of setting that, let's say, uh, Daisy guys did with with their like, uh, uh, what is what is called this DLC? Oh, the uh, map, the, the fucking Livonia yeah. map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which, which is like cheap stuff, you know. This is no, right. but you know, here's a map great. we've had for the longest time in Arma. We'll just put a port it over to fucking Daisy, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it's it, it's it's that's not the point of that, but to to build a. Uh, 
uh, the whole survival type that uh, scam can can offer within you know the limits of the story uh, uh, and put it in the in the let's say different kind of setting this is something that I'm really looking forward to and I, I believe that players will enjoy that a lot but yeah. let's go step by step let's first yeah let's first finish the, the game to make this everything works properly uh and then then think about the other things seeing how far you guys have come over the two years yeah I, there's no doubt in my mind that you won't accomplish what you're doing because you guys do work so hard it's just you know it, at first yeah the first when you first start something you don't you never know you know it could be a fucking it could wash out but i don't i don't see you guys fucking lose you, you got a full head of steam and you're going ahead and like i said i can't wait but i know it's late by you and uh, I'm going to let you go so you can get some rest. I appreciate all your time and just sitting here and bullshitting. Maybe we could do this again in the future. No, it was, it was great. It, it, it was like uh, hanging around with old friends from well, Chicago. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, glad, I'm glad you felt that way. I had a great time. I appreciate it. Yeah, right. it, uh, was, it was great. So, yeah, let's uh, bid you farewell and have a good rest or have a few, a few more beers and go uh, sack out. I got to yeah. I got to one. I got to take care of she just she just woke up from her nap, so I'm gonna go play hide and seek where I count to three and she hides in the same spot <laughs> over and over and over again. Great, <laughs> I, I I I sort of miss this kind of thing with my kid, uh, but he's uh, I I think that I will just switch. I I see that he's playing scum right now. I'll just switch to 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 his server and join him and you know uh, play a little bit with him before we go to sleep. Sounds good. All right, yeah. Tom, I appreciate it. Good talking with you, and uh, yeah, I wish you the best, and I'll be waiting, and I'll be here to promote your game, however, till til it's thank fucking you. done. Yeah, thank and you, more. thank you for thank you for for having me here. Thank you for allowing me to to uh, to, to bother people with so much useless useless conversation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not useless. Yeah. People want to know. I want. I want. My main goal was to let people know that it's just not fucking all you know, rainbows and fucking unicorns designing the game, and that you just don't patch this shit together. It's a. It's a cu accumulation of a lot of hard work in different areas, not just game development, not just programming, people, yeah, business, money. You know, this is a. This is something that the faint at heart don't fucking deal with because it's a lot of hard work, and people. A lot of yeah. people are afraid of it. And you guys are yeah. obviously not. So, I hope that we will repeat this eventually one day. Uh, I yeah. really enjoyed the whole conversation. I hope that I was not boring. No, no, not uh, at all, man. Not at all. I and I, I'll believe, believe me, I'll be hitting you up on fucking uh, Twitter when I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, and I, I really should be working, but I'm like, fuck, I gotta ask him a question or something. Okay. You know. All right, man. Well, you take care Thank you. and uh, have a good one. All right, guys. Awesome. That was it. Thomas Love. Tom. Great interview. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'll probably stream a little bit later tonight. We're going to play some scum. You can come watch me suck. Hopefully maybe one day Tom will s maybe stop over in the boom, boom room and fucking, uh, tell me what you think about the puppets and maybe we could tweak okay. the settings and make it run a little bit better. Okay. I will. Okay. All right, man. Take it easy. All right, guys. Bye we'll all. Take it easy. All right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I just want you guys to know that uh, the reason Shroud doesn't play Scum, I, I found out. He, he stopped by and... Uh, this what? game is so hard. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah, it's just too hard for him. But at the same time, I appreciate everybody sticking around. I'll probably be streaming uh, maybe in four hours or so once my daughter goes to bed. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and uh, we'll do it again some other time. Take it easy, guys. Oh, you know what? Let me get this. Let's go raid somebody. Let's go raid somebody. Let's go find someone to raid. And uh, let's see. Let's get a, new, uh, a newbie streamer. Uh, what do we got here? We're going to send you over to, uh, is anybody I know here? Uh...
we're going to send you guy uh, to the... Uh, let's show some love to this new guy here. I don't know. He's, he doesn't have anybody watching him, or he's got one guy watching him. Show him some love. Show him some support. He's supporting the game. He's streaming the game like everybody else. And, uh, yeah, I'll be streaming later if you guys want to stop back by. Because you know me. I've got nothing to do after the old lady goes to bed. So, uh, let's see. Fucking, there we go. All right, we're going to send you over to uh, the Who Kid. Check him out. Show him some love. Make sure uh, you support him. Like I said, he's, he's doing this thing with scum. So, all right, guys, catch you later.